Okay, welcome. I've just banged the invisible gavel and the City Council of May 2nd, 2019 um, is what you're looking at right now. So welcome. My name is Ryan O'Donnell. I'm uh, the Council President. I'll be presiding. These proceedings, as always, are being audio and video recorded. We'll begin with uh, public comment. This is a chance for the public to speak on any issue you wish. There's only a couple rules. First, please keep your comments to three minutes. And please remember that we don't uh, respond during this time. It's your time to give your opinion to us. The reason is so everyone has equal time and is heard fairly. So having said all that, is there anyone who'd like to give public comment today? How about that cricket in back? Would you like to say anything, <laughs> sir? What's that? No. Okay. Hearing no public comment this evening, we will just uh, convene. So I just will roll the council. Here. Present. Here. Here. Present. Here. 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 Uh, I'd first like to announce, we're going to make a formal announcement of our uh, annual budget hearings when that appropriate time comes, when we actually receive the budget. But I'd like to say tentatively, uh, the plan that I have is to have one budget hearing on Wednesday, is it June 5th? Wednesday, June 5th, like we did last year, and then carry the hearing over until the following Thursday, the next day, which is a council meeting. So essentially two hearings, but we'll hear from department heads probably on the Wednesday. So just to let you know that that's my intention at this point, unless there's any major problems or objections from uh, the council or, or, or the mayor. Okay. Any other announcements from Uh, uh, I'm sorry. I, yeah, I've got. A, I'll give you the charter review update. Um, the charter review committee held a special forum on the 30th, just a couple of days ago at JFK, uh, focusing on voting issues. The voting portion of the charter. Uh, there were three presentations given. One uh, by the city clerk for uh, what she is terming no excuse voting, uh, lobbying for advocating for the possibility of allowing uh, people to mail in their ballots, essentially, not not having to provide an excuse for absentee ballots, but point in fact, actually to functioning as an absentee system, uh, pointing out that in Oregon, they actually mail the ballots to registered voters who have the opportunity of over the period of, uh, I think, a month to uh, respond, and their voter uh, their voting numbers are much better than ours, which run around 38% on average on, on municipal elections. Second group was the Northampton Youth Commission, which I have to say um, acquitted themselves nicely. They gave a presentation and made their case for uh, lowering the municipal voting age to 16 here in Northampton. Um, uh, I'm biased, but I thought their presentation was uh, perfect pitch perfect um, and, and and it seemed to be the the sense of the the folks in attendance who also seemed to agree and then the third presentation was about ranked choice voting which was uh, very informative uh, exhaustive and at points exhausting because one of the things I would consider and this is just a sidebar I would like to embed in the charter uh, the dis disallowing PowerPoint presentations. If we could somehow, if we could do that. I think it's an unusual. It's a declaration of human rights. I personally think we'd be a better community. But however, ranked choice voting, uh, explaining it in such a way that that actually had direct relevance to us, particularly as it pertains to preliminary elections, and also at large positions, um, how it can more effectively reflect the will of the the majority and also cost less and be easier to administer. Um, so we'll see uh, if that case was successfully made to the rest of the committee relative to their recommendations. But all in all, a very well, uh, very well attended forum and uh, very informative. So just to let folks know and our, our, then we'll get back to the regular work at our next meeting. <coughs> That's great. That's good to hear. Thank you for that report. Councilor Scherer. Is it too late for a one-minute announcement? No, not at all. Uh, just a reminder that Saturday is the Northampton Pride Parade, and any councilors who are marching uh, were congregating around 1030 behind 
sort of near the bend past the brewery. Um, and then it steps off promptly at 11. Oh, we're behind the balloon arch. Yes, we're behind the balloon arch. The balloon also arch. where I Got just it. described, but there's a balloon arch too. Okay. Look for the balloon arch. That's a better landmark. You can't just say, well, look for the balloons. <laughs> there's an arch of them. Okay. So, okay. Councillor LaVarge. Yes. Um, I also want to thank the mayor and um, Councillor Gina Louise Guerra for attending the meeting on Glendale Road last night. And um, I really appreciate that. Any other <clears throat> one-minute announcements from councilors? Um, Mr. Mayor, do you have any announcements or communications? Okay. Um, so then we're going to move into the consent agenda. We'll read the items at the request of any one councilor. We will remove an item for a separate vote. Otherwise, there's no debate on the consent agenda, um, which contains many, many, many things. So, uh, first, the minutes of April 18th, 2019. Um, next, 19.050, petition for secondhand dealer licenses for feeding tube records, 221 Pine Street, room 141. Petitioner Edward Lee, you may want to remove that one uh, from the consent agenda, um, I'm guessing. Councilor Floyd, do you want to move, remove that one from the consent agenda? Please, yes, I'm sorry. Got yes. it. Yep. I'll, I'll have to recuse. Got it. So we'll remove uh, that one for a separate vote, feeding tube records. Um, also in the consent agenda, kids kids stuff. 90 Maple Street, Florence. Petitioner Tammy uh, Shirich. Urban Exchange, 233 Main Street. Petitioner Sylvia Naumberger. Next, 19051, an application for supervised display of fireworks. Applicant, Northampton Family Fourth Committee, Inc., uh, date and time of display, June 22nd, 2019, at 9.15 p.m., rain date, June 23rd. Location of display, Look Memorial Park, 300 North Main Street, Florence. Um, so votes on these things in the consent agenda will be equivalent to approving or granting them. Um, petition to operate a bowling alley. Um, per Northampton Code, Section uh, 124-2, quote, it shall be unlawful for any person to operate a pool hall including keepers of billiard pool or Scipio tables, whatever those are, or a bowling <laughs> I'm alley. Right I'm afraid I don't know. Um, or a bowling alley without first obtaining a license granted by the mayor and <clears throat> city council. Yep. So that's why we're doing this. Um, and so that is from Northampton Bowl of uh, 225 Pleasant Street for a weekday license as well as a Sunday license. Uh, J. Michael Corley is the petitioner. Um, and we have even more. Oh, that's right. <laughs> right, I forgot about this. In fact, almost four pages more. Yes. <laughs> um, in the form of various appointments to various committees. Now, I'll ask the chair of city services. These all are for referral to city services. Is that correct? You, you have not weighed in on these options. No, obviously. these are all for referral. Yeah, that's right. Thank we you. We won't take them up in the because of the seven-day, 45-day rule. Got it. <clears throat> So these are uh, various referrals to the committee and city services, which will review them and send them back to the council. We'll vote later to um, whether to approve them or not. So to the Arts Council, Rachel Hart, 211 Elm Street, uh, Unit 2A, Northampton. Um, you know, I'm not going to, well. But, excuse me, uh, <laughs> point of order, actually. Yes. And I'm sorry, a point of order uh, relative to the reference, uh, the referral issues. Yeah. Um, you know, this actually came up on the Charter Review Committee, but the, in consultation with the city solicitor, mm -hmm. uh, we frequently have decided we have the seven-day rule has actually kind of limited both committees, all committees that have been ref had referrals to them because <coughs> they felt that they could not address the issue until the seven days had expired. Point of fact, the solicitor points out, they merely they cannot report before seven days. Oh. But they can start the process immediately as soon as possible if they want, which includes research review. review. Mm -hmm. the, the recommendation cannot come previous mm -hmm. to the seven days. So yeah. that's that's been a misunderstanding we've been functioning under. And I just wanted to clear that up now as a point of order. So that's all. Okay. And then, Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> In that case, um, we'll take them up on Monday. <clears throat> if it's not too late to add to the agenda, maybe. OK. Then, okay. yeah, we'll cover. We'll, we'll talk tonight. <coughs> we still have him here for now, so I'm going <laughs> to. 
didn't let God help me help for reading them all, did it? I thought there was a That's what you were looking for. that I could invoke. No, I'm, I'm sorry. I was like, tell me more. You can no. read them very fast if you like. Okay. This is my micro machine auctioneer impression. <laughs> Um, I will try to read them fast. Rachel Hart, 211 Elm Street, Unit 2A, Northampton, term July 2019 through June 2022 to the Arts Council, uh, as well as Courtney Hummel of two, uh, uh, 320 Elm Street, uh, number 2R, Northampton, July 2019 through June 2022 to the Arts Council, also reappointment. Uh, to the Board of Assessors, Danny, Danny Nolan, 319 Elm Street, Northampton, July 2019 uh, through uh, 2019 through June 2022. Uh, to the Board of Health, Joanne Levin, 40 Columbus Avenue, Northampton, from July 2019 through June 2022. Are all of the same dates? Unless I say otherwise, all of these are for July 2019 through June 2022. Okay. Uh, so now we're on the Board of Health. That's Joe again, Joanne Levin, 40 Columbus Avenue, Northampton. To the Council on Aging, Donna Park, 205 Prospect Street, Northampton, uh, as well as... Uh, Robert Dion of 87 Vernon Street, Northampton, um, as well as Benjamin Capistrant of 48 High Street in Florence. Um, to the Community Preservation Committee, Brian Adams, 36 <coughs> Ellington Street. To the Conservation Committee, C. Mason Marin of 18 Ellington Road, um, as well as Randy uh, Krotowski of 171 Emerson Way. To this Disability Commission, Emma Cornwell of 35 Holyoke Street. To the Historical Commission, Emily Estes Belergian, uh, 19 Allison Street, as well as Martha Lyon of 313 Elm Street, as well as David Drake of 321 Locust Street, as well as Greg Delapena of 62 Chestnut Street. To the Housing Partnership, Tess Perone Poe of 32 Masonic Street, number four. To the Human Rights Commission, Megan. Uh, Payek of nine, of 9 Laurel Street, uh, as well as Karen Bellavance Grace of uh, 19 Church Street. To the Parks and Recreation Committee, Tom, Thomas Dumphy of 6 Chesterfield Road in Leeds, as well as David Cronin of 103 Pioneer Knowles Extension in Florence. To the Planning Board, Terry Colhane, uh, 5 Stearns Court, Northampton, uh, as well as uh, Krista Grenet of 42 Elm Street, Northampton, and to the Zoning Board of Appeals, Elizabeth Silver of 67 Willow Street in Florence. And last but not least, Sarah Northrup, also to the Zoning Board of Appeals, uh, 147 Hinckley Street in Florence. So with that one removal, are there any other removals? Move approval. Second. Seconded. Okay. All those in favor of the consent agenda, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Motion to uh, grant the petition, please, for... Um, an annual second hand dealer license for feeding tube records. Motion, do I hear that motion? Second. Second. Okay, second. Any discussion on the approval of this petition? Uh, I just want to reiterate that I will be recusing myself from the vote. Sounds good. Um, but nonetheless, we can do this with um, a voice vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? And one abstention from Councilor Dwight. Very good. All right, now let's see what we got here. We've done so much already. Oh, now we're going into finance. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, please. Where are we call the roll of finance. Here. Present. Councilor Navarre, present. And Councilor Shearer. Present. Excellent. Uh, first order of business is approved minutes from April 18th. Do we have a motion? Second. Second. Any discussion on minutes? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Uh, and a number of orders tonight. The first one is 19049, an order to authorize the taking of a triangular parcel at the intersection. Oh, um, oh there's one for that? Anyone? Oh, snow and ice. We can't forget snow and ice. Where did snow and ice go to? I bet it's right under this. There's snow and ice. It's 19048. It's an order to appropriate free cash to cover snow and ice deficit. Order that $152,791 be appropriated from the FY19 general fund undesignated fund balance to the following accounts to cover deficits in the snow and ice account. Um, overtime snow and ice, $99,967. And snow removal supplies, $52,000. $824. Do we have a motion to finance? Second. Uh, not, not bad. 
Yeah, no, it's better than some winters, that's for sure. Um, you know, we, we budgeted $500,000 for our um, snow and ice account in FY19. And so um, it, we hope winter is over. Um, so this is the, uh, this is the, the overage of 152,791. And now I'll come back to you as we frequently do in the spring uh, to true it up. So that's what this is for. Any questions on snow and ice? Hearing none, then all in favor of a positive recommendation in finance, please say aye. 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 And now we're on to North Street. This is uh, 19049 in order to authorize the taking of a triangular parcel at the intersection of Riverside. Actually, it's Elm, not North Elm, and Milton right. Street. Okay. So strike the north, it's Elm Street at that point. Where do that, whereas Riverside Drive, Milton Street, and the corrected Elm Street are public ways in and for the city of Northampton, and whereas in the foreseeable future, the city may need to make transportation improvements in and around Riverside, Milton Street, and Elm Street, and whereas the parcel of land now in tax title shown uh, as number one on the plan, an area of uh, 50 rods on the plan entitled plan of building lots belonging to Porter Nutting, Northampton, Massachusetts, recorded in the Hampshire County Registry of Deeds, book two, or I'm sorry, 326, pages 50 and 51, is needed in order to carry out such anticipated transportation improvements, and whereas in order to compensate for the acquisition authorized hereunder, the city must appropriate uh, sufficient funds, therefore, now therefore it be ordered that the city council authorizes the acquisition by purchase, gift, eminent domain, or otherwise, the parcel of land shown as um, lot number one, area 50 plus rods, on a plan entitled Plan of Building Lots Belonging to Porter Nutting of Northampton, Mass., recorded in the Hampshire County Registry of Deeds, Book 326, page 50 and 51, and appropriates the total sum of $300 to be applied to the outstanding tax liability on such parcel of land. I'm going to defer to our Director of Planning and Sustainability, Wayne Fiden, on this Excellent. next uh, And next while he's on his way up here, do we have a motion, finance? Second. Second? Okay. And it is Elm Street, isn't it? It is Elm Street, yes. He's my rods. <laughs> the rods, the rods. So. so you may know that Susan Wright convenes various department heads and department representatives about once every quarter to look at our tax title list. Um, sort of to try to move them along and figure out which ones we're going after, which ones serve city purposes. So we look at the tax title list every year, every you know three months, and say, are any of these properties things that might have any public benefit? Um, the intersection of Elm, Riverside, and Milton is a fair, relatively high crash intersection. Not horrible. There's a lot worse ones in town, so it's not the top of our priority list. But we can't ignore it forever. At some point, it's going to come in. So we looked at the tax title, and this came up. We said, well, let's grab this now. Again, we have no immediate plans for this. This is the area where uh, Bay State Village Association where, puts flowers. Where the sign in the garden is? Exactly. So that, that would remain there. I think it sticks about 10 feet into the parking lot that's there, that, that this parcel. So we'd be acquiring it. It would go into our inventory. We've sort of brainstormed two potential long-term solutions. Um, one is sort of a mini roundabout there. The other is actually turning Milton, making it go yeah. due left Riverside. and hit Riverside. Again, you know, we'll be back in five years with real plans, but this lets us move forward. Mm -hmm. uh, Council Yes, I'm talking to the owner with the auto body shop. At first, he thought that he had owned that parcel, and then he had found out because he got the deed and everything that he did not own that. And he was telling the people that take care of the flowers and everything that he apparently thought he had owned it, but they could do whatever they wanted to do with it. And he was very willing to pay that tax title there of $300, and apparently talked with him and you didn't make an agreement with him on that? Right, because long term we need to do something for the road intersection. So it, it makes but sense. But he owns that whole lot right with it, which is you could put building lots in that. Right, right. So, so there's a couple options we've looked at. One option we had a conversation with him a couple of years ago is if we made a left turn to hit Elm Street, to hit uh, Riverside at a, short, at a right angle, we might do a land swap with him at some point in the future. Um, so it's just, it's too far out, but we wouldn't want to give up real estate now for three hundred dollars and then have a major taking ten years from now when we do something to fix the intersection. So you know, for the foreseeable future, 
you know, we can do a license agreement where he uses the one parking spot that he has, where he continues to do it, where, where Bay State can continue to use the property. Right, because right now, they're building lots. He could go ahead and put a true family there or whatever. Yeah, I mean, that, so none of that would change. He's not losing any property. Yeah, this is property he never owned. That's correct. Um, any other questions? We probably should have just a quick motion to amend it to say Elm Street rather than North Elm Street. I got a motion to Elm amend it. Second. Second. Any discussion on that correction? All in favor? <clears throat> Aye. So then to the motion as amended. Uh, any other questions? And all in favor, please say aye. Aye. So, I'm sorry. So I imagine that abutters need to be informed about this, but I'm wondering about the base state association. They if didn't know. There, um, any kind of conversation happens with them if there needs to be. I mean, it just seems like kind of a courtesy. You know, it's funny. We usually wouldn't have done an automatic notification. They happened to invite me to give a talk just a week ago just on general sustainability issues. And so I mentioned it in passing as part of that effort. So it wasn't a dialogue, but at least I, you know, I let them know that we're working on this. And have you gotten any feedback from the association itself from the, representing the neighborhood? No, no. Again, because we don't have any plans for the property. I mean, I, we, we have gotten feedback over the years about the concerns about safety generally along Elm Street. Uh, DPW has done some work further up. Um, so they're, they're certainly aware of that. But never so when heard. planning happens, that would be the stage at which you That's have correct. conversations yeah. with them. Yeah, and I haven't got a number of complaints over the year about the angles at that intersection. It's, you know, it's, you couldn't make it any stranger than it is pretty much. So any, any work that could be done to make it safer would be good because not tons of accidents, but a lot of close calls because people, you can't see the traffic coming down Elm Street very well from either of those locations. So. Especially when school lets out. Yeah, it's really busy down there. Councilor Lubach? Yes. Um, also, too, Alec, former Councilor Alex Gieselin was getting his vehicle repaired at the auto body shop, and the owner had showed him what was going on here with that and so forth. Alex told him he knew nothing about that. Yeah, we haven't, again, we haven't done a big outreach other than that, that one meeting I happened to be at. Any more questions on this one? Hearing none, then all in favor of a positive recommendation in finance, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Um, other taking on Damon Road. Upon the recommendation of the Mayor and Office of Planning and Sustainability, this is 19061, in order to appropriate compensation for the authorized eminent domain taking of land on Damon Road. There's land of Damon. Oh, the land, uh, the of, land, of, land of, of Damon. Damon. Because there's another one that's Damon Road. Yeah, not yeah, not the road, road of Damon. Damon. Land of Damon. <laughs> land of Damon. Uh, whereas the city of Northampton is committed to conservation of land and protection of open space, and whereas the city has the opportunity to acquire a parcel of land that is adjacent to the Sawmill Hills Conservation Area, nowhere near Damon Road, uh, and that be appropriate uh, for the adding of such to the conservation area, and whereas the parts of land is shown as assessor's ID um, heirs of Charles Damon on a plan entitled Plan of Land in Northampton, Mass, Sawmill Hill Conservation Area, Hampshire County Registry prepared for the City of Northampton dated April 11, 2018 and recorded in the Hampshire County Registry of Deeds, Plan Book 241, page 95. And whereas, in order to compensate for the acquisition of author, authorized or under, the city must appropriate sufficient funds, therefore, now, therefore be ordered that the city of Northampton is authorized the acquisition by purchase gift, um, eminent domain, or otherwise of a parcel of land shown as um, assessor's ID, heirs of Charles Damon, on a plan entitled Plan of Land in Northampton, Mill Hills Conservation Area, Hampshire County Registry of Deeds. Prepared for the City of Northampton, dated April 11th, 2018, recorded in the Hampshire County Registry of Deeds, Plan Book 241, page 95, uh, and appropriates the total sum of $16,344. The property herein shall be in the custody and control of the Northampton Conservation Commission, <coughs> subject to the provisions of Article 97 of the Massachusetts Constitution. Motion? Make a motion. Second. Second. And Mr. Fiden, I think, again, wants to talk about this one. 
So um, some of you may remember you authorized a CPA acquisition about five years ago to survey the entire Soma Hills. Um, Soma Hills is sort of an odd area. There were a lot of parcels that were a woodlot that went with a house in Florence, and so it had never been well documented. When we did the survey, we found this parcel in the middle that had been abandoned in essence. You know, somebody died some number of years ago and nobody <coughs> took over the property. Um, and so we, it, we have conservation land on two sides. So we're interested in acquiring this to sort of fill in the gaps between our conservation rates. You wouldn't know it's not city land. There's already trails the volunteers have built <coughs> integrated together, but it's not owned by us. So it's up. We have the funds aside, set aside for this. So it's an appropriation, but of existing funds. <coughs> other, other questions on this one? Councilor? Can you orient us where this is exactly? Yeah, it's almost, not quite, but almost the geographic middle of a triangle between Chesterfield Road, um, Ryan Road, Spring Street, and uh, Sylvester Road. So it's about as far back from everything as you can get. <laughs> really, it's you know, close to the, high, that, at the highlight of the land. If you, I don't know if you ever go for walks back there. If you ever walk through the Salma Hills, the conservation area, the main north-south trail, this is just north of that. So it's back of what we call Roberts Hill, right? It's south of Roberts Hill. South yeah. of it. Yeah. So, so, but the ridge that Roberts Hill is on, if you went to south, crossed the Chesterfield Road, you'd hit this property eventually. Um, so have the tax, it's abandoned, but are, have the taxes been being paid on it? No. This one was, it never had, you see in the taking it says um, no assessor's ID. Okay. So I think because until a survey was done, it hadn't been identified that this parcel even existed. So the last time the city redid the entire mapping of all our parcels in 1964, was um, this parcel didn't show up. So it didn't have a, a, a assigned number, so no taxes have been allocated against it. But we still have to pay the heirs? Or it's an escrow account in case an heir ever shows for it. Okay. There's some number of years that they have the right to come forward. Oh. Yeah, the, uh, the, the deed that's attached to this. 1870. 1870. So it's been sleeping out there for a while. <laughs> yeah. And, and you all know there's a theoretical risk when we take land by eminent domain that someone could say we didn't pay enough. But this land is landlocked by us. It's not accessible. So there's no real risk for this kind of parcel. No one's, you know, it's not worth very much. Any other questions on this? No? Then uh, in finance, all in favor of a positive recommendation, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. And uh, now, now Damon on the recommendation of the mayor and Department of Public Works. This is 19064, in order to appropriate money and authorize takings by eminent domain for the Damon Road reconstruction. Order that whereas Damon Road and Bridge Road are public ways in the city of Northampton, and whereas Damon Road and Bridge Road are in need of reconstruction, and the city in conjunction with the Massachusetts Department of Transportation is undertaking the reconstruction and widening, widening of the ways including drainage improvements and slope stabilization from Bridge, Bridge Street um, to the easterly section of Bridge Road west of King Street. Um, that's the project. And whereas the reconstruction of Damon Road from Route 9 to Route 5 is currently programmed on the 2020 Pioneer Valley Regional Transportation Improvement Program at a total cost of $10,043,653 uh, with an $8 million $4,922 federal transportation funds reserved to fund a portion of the project with the city of Northampton responsible for the cost of right-of-way acquisition and any water and sewer utility improvements. And whereas in order to proceed with the project, the city needs to acquire permanent fee interests, permanent easements, permanent utility easements, and temporary construction easements. And whereas the project and land acquisition are shown on a plan entitled Alteration Plan of Damon Road and Ridge Road prepared the city of Northampton dated February 28th, 2019, signed and sealed by Jeffrey Blanford, a uh, land surveyor, dated April 12th, 2019. <clears throat> and whereas in order to um, compensate for the acquisitions authorized here under the city must appropriate sufficient funds, therefore, uh, now therefore to be ordered 
that the city authorizes the acquisition by purchase gift, eminent domain, or otherwise of permanent fee interest, permanent easements, permanent utility easements, and temporary construction easements uh, for the purpose of widening, reconstructing Damon Road and Bridge Road as shown on, um, on the plan and appropriates the total sum of $680,300 from the general fund FY 2019 undesignated fund balance to be distributed in accordance with the schedule of payments attached here too. Do we have a, a motion? And a motion. Second? Second. And the long expected Damon Road. Yes, long expected. I believe we started working on this in 2008. Um, what's that? Even earlier, actually. Uh, there may have been discussions, but we didn't actually start doing the design work for it until 2008. Um, the state actually um, uh, ramped it up uh, more in 2012 when we got to finally got to the 25% design um, process. And actually, the state agreed to um, take over the design as well as uh, we put, we, we got it put on the Regional Transportation Improvement Program, um, which is administered by the Metropolitan um, Planning Organization. Uh, and that's why the, in, the, um, in the resolution you see that there's uh, an allocation of, of state and federal funds to the project. So um, the sort of the long and short of it is the state is going to uh, pay for the construction, manage the construction, um, uh, and our role in the process is to um, pay for these right-of-way acquisitions. Um, these aren't all of the right-of-way acquisitions. There's actually two um, that are on the other side of the railroad tracks. Um, there's actually two homes that are involved. We're not involved with those. The state is actually working on those. Um, that was sort of an agreement we reached a couple of years ago. Um, we will also take the opportunity um, while the um, road is torn up uh, to replace about 1,800 feet of sewer line um, as well as about 3,800 feet of water line, um, which will be paid for out of the water and sewer enterprise funds. Um, and again, something we frequently do when we have an opportunity like this to have a major roadway opened up. Um, they are going to be paying for um, some major uh, other uh, major infrastructure, including a upgrade of a storm sewer um, that crosses under the um, uh, under the Norwatic Trail. It's about a, they're going to be putting in like a 72 inch pipe crossing that will be an upgrade for the future. Um, and as you saw from some of the plans, uh, this is going to include sidewalks and uh, you know bicycle and pedestrian accommodations. Um, there's going to be um, pedestrian uh, safety improvements and crossings for residents who live at River Run apartments. Um, and it's going to also finally make the final needed improvements um, in terms of the lane, the widening, and the um, installation of the queuing lanes at the intersection with um, King Street and Damon Road, um, they kind of did a, a hybrid of it when they put in the when they had to put in the light at Industrial Drive, um, but it was really kind of a placeholder until they had the space to be able to um, to do it. So that one of the issues we have there with traffic backs up backups is is now that the railroad. Um, crossing is an active crossing. There has to be separation. Um, so this will actually provide for more queuing on the other side of the rail line. So, um, and again, it's programmed for the FY 2020 tip, um, which is why uh, we did, you probably may or may not remember an email that went out actually to, uh, to Councillor Nash and then it went out to the whole council back in 2017, uh, where you know we also had to hire um, someone, um, Peter Sleeper Associates, um, who actually is in, was, was our person to actually contact each one of the um, property owners. Um, they held a meeting uh, and then have been um, holding individual meetings with each of the property owners to explain um, what is needed for the project, whether it's a construction easement, whether it's actually a, a, a taking of some amount of land. Um, and so um, that process uh, culminated in this dollar figure that we now have to appropriate or have, have appropriated um, so that we can now go through the process of trying to either acquire um, through a sale or, or and or in a couple of cases, we've had two people already agree to just donate uh, the construction easements. Um, and if necessary, uh, to clear title um, a, um, uh, a taking, um, which would we would have to come back to you uh, with a separate vote on those if we did 
do that. But this just allows us to now move forward to the next step um, and gives us the money that we would need to sign contracts with any of these um, landowners. Um, very similar to what happened on Route 66 um, or any big project where you're, where you're needing to alter the right of way. And of course, we're adding um, sidewalks. So in some cases, we need, um, we need that for sidewalk expansion. But you have maps that kind of show you um, the areas um, and uh, obviously this is a major, it's not only a major throughway for Northampton, but it's, it's sort of the, the interchange between the north and southbound exits of 91. Um, and obviously carries a lot of traffic to the hill towns as well. Um, so it's a big project and uh, we have the opportunity for state funding. And so that's why I come to you now for this phase of the project. Mm -hmm. Council Lombard. Yes, so we're looking at Six hundred and eighty thousand three hundred dollars. That is correct, correct. Mm -hmm. and that is to pay for eminent domains. Uh, it's it's as the order states. It is for <coughs> um, either the uh, it's primarily for acquisition, but it allows for the possibility of several different ways of acquiring, include po including possibly eminent domain, um, to, as we go through this process. And again, that, as Mr. Fyden explained, um, when you have, if you do go the eminent domain route, you have to offer damages, you know, in terms of the exchange. And so we have appraisals for what all these various either easements or actual um, acquisitions are worth. So this isn't an order um, to approve an eminent domain. It's an order to um, appro appropriate this, these funds um, and author for, the, for use for uh, acquiring the property. Um, and if it does, if we end up having to use any eminent domain in any of those cases, we would come back to you uh, with the kind of order that you had for the land of Damon, okay. um, th which would be an actual vote on an eminent domain uh, taking, as well as the little triangle that you dealt with on Milton and, um, mm -hmm. and, and Elm Street. Riverside. And who is doing the construction work of that? <clears throat> um, the um, Mass DOT has not awarded the contract yet, um, but Mass DOT will put it out to bid um, and they will handle the procurement uh, process. But it has not gone out to bid yet. Um, you know, it's an FY 2020 project. Um, so we're all, we're sort of gearing up the design and now this is one of the key steps in order to move forward with it. Is that yeah. Councilor, um, Councilor Skira, did you hear anything? My main concern, Mayor, yes, is not. because of what we went through on the reconstruction of Route 66, mm -hmm. we were promised that property pens would be replaced yeah. and that they would come back and do them. Never heard from them, which you know, for almost a year. And then they said, no, nobody ever called them, but they guaranteed they would be replaced. So. I'm just asking that because this is a costly project yep. that at least in due respect, if they remove them, replace them back. Uh, we can certainly pass that along to um, Mass DOT who will be leading the project. Um, <laughs> I think a lot of, you know, it's a little bit of a different, um, you know, a little bit different than Route 66 and Ward 6. There's a lot of asphalt and a lot of commercial lots. So I'm not sure that there's as many property pins, there but in, in cases where there might be, we can certainly um, we can certainly ask them to be mindful of that. Yeah. Good. Council Scare. Um, so is Bridge Road finally going to get uh, sidewalks and will they go to, up to Jackson? Um, there, do you see it on that plan? I got to tell you. I'm yeah, it's right a, it's a small plan. <laughs> it's I, hard can, to I can try to get better detail for you, but they are trying to do some sidewalk improvements as well. I don't believe that the area will go all the way up to Jackson. Um, but let me, that let me get some more information. Sort of, What's that? It would be too bad if people couldn't turn and go down from Jackson. I know that. And I know from Hampshire Heights. Starts at the sidewalk. It starts at the traffic light right there, uh, which we've done some signal planning. So I believe it does include sidewalks, but I, I'd have to get the bigger plans to verify that for you. Um, but again, it's a fully designed project. Right. So if it wasn't, we'd have to come back and try to address that. But they're, they've, they're doing a lot of work on um, pedestrian signalization at King. Um, 
Bridge, uh, Bridge Road. So I believe there is sidewalks, um, but I can verify that. I mean, I Bastio, can see them. It's just hard yeah. to see. And, you know, the, the people in Hampshire Heights have been needing yes, sidewalks indeed. to be able to get down to King Street for yep. forever. So. Yeah, and that's that was one of the goals of this project was to try to make those pedestrians. So I'm, I'm fairly certain, and I can look at the plans a little bit later once I'm okay. and, and verify that for you. Okay. Um, so, and I mean, Mass DOT just built a sidewalk heading, you know, north right. um, along that route as well, which is a heavily traveled pedestrian route. Councilor Dwight, you had a question? Um, that was actually my question about uh, pedestrian safety and systems for the residents of Hampshire Heights River Run. Mm -hmm. And Hampshire Heights yeah. both, both uh, critical interest in discussion for the last 20 years about uh, safe access across King Street. Um, particularly to places like the Pride Gas Station, uh, which serves as, as a convenience store for, for most of the community. So um, whatever information, and I realize actually that's kind of a little far afield from what we're, we're discussing to approve. So I, but since we're talk, we've talked about it, it yeah. more information I can find out yep, about I that. can verify right. it for you. Thank you. Yeah, the, plan, the plans we have do not go that far. Right. Yeah. Oh. They don't Although, bridge they go road. to one of the accesses. But. Actually, I got 14 pages of plans right here. <laughs> and 14 is where that is, and it yeah, doesn't go that's right. Uh, it's Councilor Nash, you had a question. Yeah, so, um, Mayor, there, the uh, list of figures for individual parcels, mm -hmm. so are those negotiated? Is Are these agreed upon numbers, or? Well, they're, they're agreed upon in that we have... Um, Identify, you know, the engineers have um, identified them right. um, and identified the size of the parcels. Then we've had a third party appraiser come in okay. and give us an appraisal. Um, and then, uh, you know, Mr. Sleeper's job has been to then communicate with each one of the property owners um, and um, on behalf of the city. And so we'll be then, you know, we're continuing to have those conversations like, okay, I'm the guy who met with you back in 2017. Um, I'm coming back to you to show you what the finished design of the project is. And, you know, um, you know, the state or the city needs to acquire this sliver of land so that we can have the bike, you know, the bike lane uh, fit properly, um, and this is the value of it, um, and, you know, et cetera. And so in that case, um, the person may say, that's great, uh, no problem, where do I sign? In a couple of cases, we've already had people say, where well, we just need a construction easement, we'll just donate the easement, we're not, we're not asking for any money, we're happy to have Damon Road fixed. Um, uh, so that's sort of the process that moves on from here. Um, this vote doesn't really affect that. It's just that we, um, you know, we can we can't sign a contract for anything for sale for for, you know, um, for services for anything unless there's an appropriated source of funds. Mm -hmm. So this kind of moves it forward to that from the hypothetical now to now there's a source of funds to be able to go through this process. So by and large, are people along Damon Road uh, happy with this idea and open to? I mean, is, is there anybody pushing back or? Um, uh, we have the only the, the the only sort of extended discussions we've had um, have been with um, the, you know, the, you know, the um, print shop, uh, Pacific Printing, yes. um, which is already like really close to the street. And so, um, you know, the sidewalk for them is going to be, um, you know, right in front of their, it's going to be like Main Street, basically. It's going to be right in front of their, right in front of their door. Um, as opposed to having right now, there's like a little bit of a separation, but that's just the nature of um, needing to have the proper lane width. Um, and that's not their primary, they have a side entrance as well and a delivery entrance. Um, so it doesn't, you know, but that's, that was one issue where we have to move the sidewalk closer to their building. Mm -hmm. um, but by and large, um, my understanding has been that um, people who live on Damon Road um, and have to Try to get out of their driveways and and um, and see and, and, and who want to walk, who want to you know, if you live at River Run and you want to go across the street, um, I think by and large people know that this is a project that's long overdue. Um, so I don't, I, we don't foresee any issues with it. Okay. Yeah, uh, Councilor Bidwell. Uh, I'm just curious about how the how the funding all adds up on this. We got a, a, a roughly ten million dollar <coughs> total project mm -hmm. eight million coming from the feds uh, the feds and state yeah 
And then this 680 is a portion of that, of getting to the 10 million? Or yeah, no, the 10 million is a, is a sort of a full project cost and they're using 8 million of federal funds and then they have state funds as well that they contribute to these projects. They use a combination of federal or state funds. It's kind of a blend. Um, so our local piece is not on there. Um, so you know, our local piece is our is the is the funds that we had to pay. Um, we use Chapter ninety funds to pay Mr. Sleeper. We had to hire for the um, for the um, you know for his services to do the um, to do the actual um, meeting with homeowners, et cetera. And then this is the actual cost of the acquisition, the six the, the estimated cost. Um, so that's really our cost that we are paying for. So there's, 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 there's to the a million and three, <coughs> three difference in there between the total 10 and the 8 million that the state and feds are putting well, in. No, what, the 8 is the, is the federal contribution right. to the state's right. um, overall transportation improvement that's managed by MassDOT. Right. Right. So that difference is being made up with state funds. Okay. Yeah. So we, we shouldn't expect these numbers to... At some point, total this ten million dollar figure. Um, those numbers are. It's very, well. I sit on the MPO. I'm I'm a member of the MPO, and I can tell you that it's um, very much like you know, in many ways, like the capital improvement program. And we um, spent because it's a five year tip. Um, last week we spent about two hours trying to rejigger projects because one project, you know, when it came back in, it came in higher, and then so we're always trying to move things around. Um, so that's a placeholder for what the engineers estimate the cost is going to be, and they usually build in contingencies, et cetera, and then it goes out to bid. Um, and so, and again, that's the state's money that's managed by the MPO, um, and then we will, so that's the placeholder for it right now, but until it goes out to bid, uh, we won't really know what, their con what the total cost of the project is. All I can tell you is for our costs, we've got this piece, and then we've got about 1.2 million in water and sewer work or improvements um, that are paid for out of the water, you know, uh, through water line replacement and sewer line replacement. Well, then that would be the answer to my question. Okay. Because they're, what, these numbers are missing about 1.2 to 1.3 million, yeah. getting to that total. Okay. And part of that is our water and sewer contribution. Is that what you're saying? Um, I, I just want to be sure that there's not another million three that we would still come back to us in some way. Yeah, I, I'm going to have to verify that. I'm not. I'm not convinced that that's a local contribution. Um, I'm going to have to do some more work and verify that. For okay. You. Um, I just know that there's a federal direct federal highway funds, and then there's funds that are allocated to the state. Um, and sometimes things are paid with all federal highway. Sometimes it's a combination of federal and state um, mass DOT funds. Um, sometimes it's congestion <laughs> management funds. So I'll, let me find out what that demarcation is. Okay. Because um, we're actually spending 1.2 plus the you know acquisition cost plus you know et cetera. Um, but in any event, we're getting some significant leverage. Oh, yeah, no question about of that. Um, our local no, dollars, no. and this is not a project we would be able to tackle clearly um, ourselves. Um, so, yeah, but I can try to get some okay. clarity on that. Thank you very much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, oh, Counselor. Um, thanks. I just don't want to let the sidewalk thing go quite yet. Um, okay. Because in addition to the one side of Jackson Street, the other part that I'm concerned about is under the under 91. Because I always see people kind of walking under there. And they've, ins they, they've, they've installed come. a sidewalk there. Pardon me? They have installed a sidewalk yeah. there. It's just poorly lit, and it just seems like a dangerous kind of narrow area. So do you, can you describe what the plans are for that section? Are you, is it even um, going that far? No, I think that was built by MassDOT um, because there were people that were using it as a path, and uh -huh. so they built that sidewalk. Um, and it does, you know, it, 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 sort, of, it sort of comes up to the off-ramp there's like a crossing and then it goes under and continues up to um to you know the walmart plaza and, and what i'm saying is people sort of like leaving the sidewalk and and trying to beeline across the road to get to to river run um but what I'm, i guess what i well, well there is going to be a pedestrian signal now at king and 
Damon and, and you know that that's going to have a pedestrian signal. So that's good. So they can cross exactly. way up there and then go down. So that's yes. a, um, yeah. I would just like to add my voice to other counselors who are you know if we're approving this, that is something that I, I would like to see. Then it sounds like more on the Jackson Street or up towards Jackson Street side to complete. I mean, actually, the city has done great work in building out the connections towards like Walmart and places like that, which also didn't used to exist. So connecting the network, um, I just like to support other councils who have made that have made that observation. And so I don't know if that's possible to amend the plans. Maybe you can tell me uh, or if they're set. Yeah, I, I, it's not that I um, I would just want to verify what the plans are, but I've, yeah. I've got a um, it's I've got a, I'm pulling up a, another plan that I have. It's going to the lower part. Yeah. Um, and so there is going to be, when you turn left onto bridge, um, you're sitting at King and you turn left to go up Bridge Road, yep. um, there's going to be a five foot sidewalk going up the hill. And then there's also going to be a bike lane mm -hmm. as well off the, um, I've got like a zoomed in version of it. Um, and so, uh, it widens to a six foot sidewalk and it does go all the way up to the intersection with um, Jackson Street. It goes all the way up yes. there. Yes, it does. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So I could. Great. Um, it's hard for me. I didn't get that from the plans, but I'm not like. Yeah, I have like a. Reader, well, so. I think it was. Um, uh, well, I mean, I can I can send it to Laura and if you want to put it up on the screen, but it was really meant to show the all the various turn lanes that are being added. Um, OK the queuing lanes that are being added, but it does give better detail. Well, that's really good then. Yeah. So thank you. And then, um, you know, it's going to have a bike box, uh, you know, a bike queuing box, um, sort of like what we have uh, when you come down Elm to where uh, the intersection with State okay. and South is. Um, and there's a, you know, there's a, a crosswalk. There's basically going to be a four-way crosswalk as if you were in downtown Northampton, um, you know, with crosswalks to all corners of the intersection. Um, and then a connection, um, uh, uh, I'm just trying to see where that connection goes. Yeah, so there's a, there's, there's, yeah. So there is full pedestrian accommodations at that crosswalk. Nice. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Question? Yes. Um, just for reference, because there's been a lot of discussion about the details of the plan, and I know you're looking at it now. Yeah. And for people who are listening to this conversation, yep. I'm wondering, how can they access those details? Uh, the the twenty five. I think you're looking at what was done at the twenty five percent or the seventy five percent. Yeah, no, we've got the hundred percent design. Okay, um, is it possible for folks to see that? Yeah, they're they're, they're um, I'm I'll, I'll verify that they're on the DPW website, but okay. they're on the Mass DOT website as well. Okay, because it's their project, so right. there right. is a. Um, and I think my colleagues are looking at it over here. Yeah. So, all right, so folks can look at those details. Yes. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Yeah, MassDOT has all the various iterations as well. But um, yeah, I'm trying to. Um, uh, Councilor Klein, you haven't had a crack at it yet. Question: um, How does this does this coincide with the roundabout that's happening up on um, North King? Um, the uh, that project is also that one's actually starting sooner. Mm -hmm. That's starting this year. So that's actually a fiscal 2019 project. Um, that's the exit 19. Um, I was, have been feeling a little. I think she's asking about the roundabout up by Marks Motors and oh. else. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were talking about the one. Okay. Yeah, no, that one's a little, that one's further programmed in the, I think that one may be in 20 or 21. I'd have to look at the tip. But we have kind of an interesting convergence of, for whatever reason, a number of Northampton projects are kind of advancing in the queue. Um, because they're ready, but the the round the new the newest roundabout will actually be where exit 19 is at the other end of um, uh, Damon Road. That one's in this year's uh, construction, and they're going to be working on that this construction season. Um, and then this one would be a 20. And I've um, I, I can't remember where we landed with the um, with the North Elm, but it's uh, it's either 20 or 21. But I can verify that for you. Again, these projects move around a lot. Um, as funding gets moved from one project to another or bids come in high. And so it's a, it's a bit of a, can be a moving target. Uh, as you can tell, since, you know, we started working on this one in 2008 and it's taken us this long to get it to the finish line. 
So that one will be coming um, further down the line. But yeah, but I can verify that. And again, for my money, if Mass Highway wants to do these projects like now and they're on the tip, it's like, well, I would prefer that we do it because they're going to get more expensive and there's a risk of, um, of a project getting bumped off the tip um, further down the road um, if because of cost overruns with another project, particularly like a Springfield project or a Holyoke project. So, Councilor Nash. Um, so when these types of projects with mass highway, mass dot, um, that I we kind of get stuck. They're not our projects, so we can't have a public meeting necessarily about them. And I'm wondering, I'm wondering if we could get like an overview, you know, for council or maybe even a public meeting of some sort. Um, because I mean, like the, the the questions about you know the the crosswalks on King Street where the sidewalks are, and all of this is is like really good information. And I can see two counselors over there kind of looking at so <laughs> different plans. The only thing I can say to you is that they're they're you know because this was a mass DOT process, they did uh, public hearings. Um, I'd have to find the date of when they held the design public hearing, but they did have design public hearings that were, you know, noticed. And so um, it's a bit like the, I like the State Street project that we've talked about where they did that process um, because it's, that's their process. So I, um, while I'm happy to provide lots of information, I would not want to say, guess what? We're all going to get together and redesign Damon Road. Because um, if I understand. you do that, then like, um, mm -hmm we're in big trouble because that we're going to lose the money. But I mean, we, a lot of work has gone into designing this and like Dave Valletta, our city engineer has been deeply involved as has, you know, our planning and sustainability department because of the wanting to have bike accommodations and wanting to have sidewalks. Um, and so um, happy to provide you with information. I'm a little concerned about saying, let's have a public meeting. On, well, uh, no, just yeah. in terms of, you as know, it's a, a that... design meeting. But I also want to say there have been public meetings on this. They've been led by you know, Mass DOT because that's how these big $10 million projects work. Agreed. Yeah. And that, but I, I, I can see colleagues looking at plans to, to really understand what is actually going to be, you know, what, yep. what's going to be built here. Yep. And because we're going to get questions from constituents and um if you would just like, to have like an overview of like here's what's coming down the pike if you would like on second reading for example we could i could try to bring in a presentation that would show you that would sort of a really blown up version of it um that would be fine yeah okay uh, any more questions on this one finance <laughs> hearing none all in favor of a positive recommendation at this point in finance please say aye aye, aye. Uh, the next is 19066 is an order to reprogram $45,000 from the Bridge Street Elementary roof to the Forbes Library HVAC project, whereas the city appropriated $100,260 to install climate controls for special collections room at Forbes Library in June of 2016 as part of the FY 2017 capital plan and borrowed $200,000 in June of 2017 as part of the FY18 capital plan and whereas additional funding of $45,000 is needed to complete the project and whereas uh, the city approved borrowing in an amount of $500,000 for repairs to the Bridge Street Elementary School roof in June of 2017 as part of the FY18 capital plan and that project is now complete and there remains unused funds and whereas the funds have been bonded and remain unused may be reprogrammed to a purpose with the same useful life as the original bonded purpose. Uh, order that $45,000 be appropriated from the funds remaining in the Bridge Street Elementary School roof project to be used towards completing the HVAC project at Forbes Library. Do you have a motion to finance? Make a motion. Uh, second? Second. So we've had two major capital projects that we've been doing at Forbes Library um, that have um, spanned um, several uh, years and have involved lots of multiple rebids and, and bidding. This was one that was designed to um, to provide uh, better heating and ventilation for the special collections um, at the Forbes Library um, and to also save energy overall so that we would not have to run the main heating system 
Um, and so that work has been uh, that we did an initial contract and there's some remaining work that has to be done to complete the contract. Um, so we have a shortfall. Um, we have some unused funds from the Bridge Street Roof Project. Um, so this is basically asking to reprogram these funds from Bridge Street to the Forbes Library Project uh, so we can finish the HVAC project at, um, at Forbes Library. Questions? So just to be clear, this is capital plan money that can't be reappropriated to the schools in another way. Yes, and it's not only capital money, but it's bonded money. So we would not be able to use bonded money to pay for operating expenses. Um, this and and you know we do have to come back and get it reprogrammed for another capital expense, um, and for a project that has a similar life duration as the you know roof project. Um, so any of these kinds of borrowings are very strict that way. Um, any more councilor Barbara? yes um thank you councilor um shira because i wanted to talk about that the difference between capital plan and local employees for staff and so forth because we did hear that last yes, we night we talked about that on glendale road last exactly yes, i've been talking about it a lot lately so um and i think the council you know understands that but it's good for us to reiterate it so the public understands that um thank you yeah any other questions on this one? Um, hearing none, then all in favor of the positive recommendation of finance, please say aye. 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 And then uh, the last one is 19067. In order to appropriate $122,441 in free cash uh, to Forbes Library window replacement, whereas the city appropriated $400,000 towards the replacement of windows at Forbes Library in June of 2017 as part of the FY18 capital plan and in May of 2018 as part of the cap, uh, FY19 capital plan. Whereas the Community Pre Preservation Act funded $100,000 of $100,000 has been approved to bring the total available for the project up to $500,000, whereas the project has been bid three times in order to solicit reasonable bids, and the most recent bid requires additional funds to complete the project at a cost of $622,441. Order that the $122,441 be incorporated from the FY18 general fund undesignated fund balance to provide the remaining funds needed to complete the replacement of the windows at Forbes Library. Motion. Second. Second. This is that other project that we were doing in conjunction with the HVAC project and actually part of the mm -hmm. part of the energy efficiency upgrades. So the building includes some of these windows, which um, staff can tell you, you know, papers blow off of tables in the winter. These are original to the building. These are the original, the original windows. Yeah. Yeah. So um, there's significant energy loss. And so this would be historic renovations. We've done multiple bids. Um, this bid actually came back with um, multiple alternate scenarios that said, you know, for this much you can do this many windows, for that much you can do that, and you know, you could do the basement windows. And so, um, my feeling is, having been working with Forbes on this project now, we did apply for actually more money from the CPC, but we were only granted a hundred thousand. Um, that I would like to just complete this project. Um, it's not going to get any cheaper, um, and especially since we'll have a contractor who's mobilized on site. Um, the thought of putting off, you know, you know, ten or twelve windows and then coming back at a future date. I'd rather just invest the uh, the money now that we have and get the project done. And I know the um, I know Lisa Downing and the uh, trustees are also very interested in doing that. So that's why I'm bringing this forward. Mm -hmm. um, questions on this one. Then uh, all in favor of a positive recommendation of finance, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And uh, that completes our agenda. I know of no more new business, so uh, an order to adjourn. Second? All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Okay, so we're back in the full city council meeting. We're going to run through some of the financial orders you just heard. Uh, first is 19048 in order to appropriate free cash to cover snow and ice deficit. Okay. Okay. Second, any discussion on this financial order? Uh, hearing on roll call. Councilor Bidwell. 
Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Yes. Councillor Donald. Yes. Yes. Councillor Sheriff. Yes. Okay, approved on first reading. Next is 19.049, order authorized taking of triangular parcel. At the intersection of Riverside, um, now it would be Elm, but it's listed as North Elm. Is that right? It's been amended? Yes. Okay. And no motion approved by no, no. Seconded by Council Dwight. Any discussion on this um, order as amended in finance? Okay. Then we'll yes. 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 Approved on first reading. Next is 19.061, an order to appropriate compensation for and authorize eminent domain taking of land of Damon. Moved to approve. I think I said something. <laughs> second. <laughs> Made and seconded. I think it's clear in the public record what I'm referring to, 19.061. <laughs> Land of Damon. Any discussion about the land of Damon? It's, it's many Trees secrets. And rocks. <laughs> Let's have a roll call, please. Council Dwight. Yes. Council Klein. Yes. Councilor Lebarge. Yes. 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 And authorized takings by eminent domain for Damon Road reconstruction. Second. Okay. Second. Any discussion on this? Uh, roll call, please. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Gabar. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. 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 45,000 from Bridge Street Elementary Roof to Forbes Library HVAC Project. Move to approve. Second. Second. Okay. Second, any discussion? First reading? Then roll call, please. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Cash. Yes. Councilor Dollar. Yes. Councilor Sheriff. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Would anyone like to move to suspend rules to fill out uh, yes. a motion to suspend rules, please? Second. Second. Yeah. Any discussion on suspension of rules? Um, the mayor's office has requested this in order to be able to sign a contract and keep projects on schedule. So hearing no other discussion on suspension of rules, as for a voice vote on that question, all those in favor of suspending rules say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any move second reading, please? Second. Okay. okay. Made in second. Any discussion on this order on second reading? Hearing none, roll call, please. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Shera. Yes. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Yes. Okay. We're second reading. Next is 19.067. In order to appropriate $122,441 free cash to Forbes Library window replacement. Move to approve. Second. Okay. Made and second. Any discussion on first reading? Suspend the rule. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Sheriff. Yes. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor White. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Move to suspend rules, please. Second. Okay. Uh, any discussion on the suspension of rules for the purpose of having two readings tonight? Um, so all those in favor of doing that, I say aye. 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 Opposed, any abstention? Okay, rules are suspended. Motion on second reading, please. Second reading, please. Motion second. to approve and second reading has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Then roll call. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. 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 Okay, let's prove on second reading. Now, on second reading is 18.235, in order to accept master of law, chapter 64D, section 3DB, to impose community impact fee on short-term rentals within two and three family dwellings. Okay. Okay, it's been made and seconded. Council LaBarge seconded it. Any discussion on second reading? Uh, if not, then roll call. Councilor Shera. Yes. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. 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 Yes.
Yes. Yes. So that's proven second reading as well. Um, we have some orders here. Actually, just one order. Um, I will read it. It's in the City Council, May 2nd, 2019, upon the recommendation of me. Um, 19.063, in order to amend the council rules, order the following amendments to the council rules be adopted. And um, what we're going to do is, this is on the screen, and so rather than describe verbally every last amendment, I'm going to read it as it would be if amended, but we're amending the existing rule and changing it to the following. I think that's a good way to describe it. Okay. Um, so, rule 4.8, public comment. Members of the public may address the council and all council committees on any matter for a period of three minutes. This period may be extended or reduced at the discretion of the presiding officer. Whenever language translation is required for a member of the public to address the city council, such persons shall be provided six minutes. Individuals to, uh, wishing to speak must, must be recognized by the presiding officer and shall state their name um, and city or town of residence and optionally their address, okay? And then as you can see, there's some deletions which I can discuss if we want. Um, next is 5.1, starting with 5.11. Did you miss the final sentence? Oh, thank you. Yep, thank you. Um, our administrative assistant to the city council pointed out that it will maintain the uh, public comment for, uh, section, uh, rule 4.8 will con continue to end with counselors will not respond to any comments from the public. So. No change in that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, and now 5.11, we read agenda items. Matters proposed for inclusion in city council agenda shall be filed with the administrative assistant to the city council. Agenda shall be published in accordance with the open meeting law. 5.1.2, communication with the mayor's office. Um, the administrative assistant to the city council shall serve as a point of contact with the mayor's office regarding the city council's agendas. And finally, 5.1. 1.3, adding uh, members to the council agenda. The council president shall have discretion over the items added to council agendas, except that if the addition of an item has been once requested by a member of the city council or the mayor, um, and at the discretion of the council president, that item is not placed on an agenda of a regular council meeting, then before the next regular council meeting, any two members of the city council may petition the council president who shall then add the item to the agenda of the next regular council meeting. So may I have a motion to approve this? Look to approve. That's good. Second. Okay, thank you. Um, so if I may, so there's obviously two sections here. One is about public comment, and this is a section that um, I was actually working with Councillor Scherer on here um, about. And so we had discussed various changes. Actually, I think, Councillor, you brought up the idea of not requiring people to give their home address because some have felt uncomfortable about that, which I think is reasonable. So that's removed and it's optional. Uh, we also discussed adding language translation. We had a number of occasions where someone needed a translator, and if you need a translator, you probably need more time. Mm -hmm. That double the time would be good. Um, as you can see, shall be permitted to is um, changed to may. And the thing that has been, and then will has been changed to must, be, must be recognized by the presiding officer in the business wishing to speak. And what has been deleted is, um, as you can see, the, you know, the phrase that they'll state their name and address, or optionally their address, to the administrative assistant to the city council, to the administrative to the city council has been struck because it's not needed. But the substantive thing that's been, that I propose eliminating is, is following, uh, quote, the presiding officer shall rule out of order during the public comment session any remarks that clearly constitute defamation with due regard for the distinction between elected officials and city employees who are public figures and those city employees who are not public figures. The presiding officer may order any member of the public who breaks this rule to cease speaking. So that part is being removed, okay? Um, why? One, um, we have to be very careful with free speech and there is in fact, if we needed a reason to do this, which we don't, don't really, there was a, um, it's the town of Natick School Committee. Oh, here it is. Um, yeah, it was a Superior Court civil action. The town of Natick had a rule, and it said you can't use defamatory language. And the court said you can't say that because defamatory language is only language. It's only defamatory if it's been adjudicated defamatory. I can't just decide something has been defamatory. So we can't and we shouldn't have a rule that says you can't use defamatory language. 
because the First Amendment. You want to stop there and talk about that one first? Councillor Klein. I have a question then, um, especially in light of what you just read to us about Natick, about the term um, <clears throat> individuals wishing to speak must be recognized by the presiding officer. Mm -hmm. Because it seems to me that if um, there is uh, some kind of provision in state law or, or beyond state law for um, freedom of speech that um, this could potentially be problematic. So in other words, somebody could choose to yell something um, from the floor or from the audience, I should say, um, that has not been recognized by the presiding officer. So, um, you know, what does that mean? What Would there be some kind of um, response to that if that person hasn't been recognized? I mean, is it really, I guess I'm asking, is it really necessary to even have that um, that sentence in here? Which sentence? I'm sorry. Individuals wishing to speak must be recognized by the presiding officer. The intention of that is if someone just comes to the council and they wish to speak their mind, they, they have a right to be recognized to speak their mind. That's all I'm, I mean by that. In other words, I can't be like, you can speak and you can speak, but not you and you. So everyone, that's why I put must. If you want to. I'm uncomfortable. I'm sorry? I said I'm uncomfortable with that. Well, let's finish. Before we, okay, so we had Councillor Klein sills the floor, then I saw mm -hmm. Councillor Bidwell's go, hand go up. So, Councillor, do you want to? I, I, maybe I didn't answer your question. Um, I don't think you did, but I, okay. I'd like to hear what other people have to say about it before I okay. comment again. The, the purpose of that is just as everyone who wants to give public comment can. Right now it says will. It says we're changing will to must, so it's just a stronger version. So, Councillor Bidwell. I was just clarifying. Your, your, your intent is when, when you say must recognize, that's in the context of public comment. Yes. It's not just anywhere randomly in the course of a meeting. Correct. Absolutely. This is all this applies to the public comment period. Absolutely. Okay. And so I think Councilor Barge wants to say something, and then we'll go to Councilor Carney. No, I'm all set. Okay, Councilor Carney. Um, no, I, I, I see what, <clears throat> what this amendment is doing, although I, I don't know that we need a stronger language than will. It seems to me it says the same thing. Wishing Individuals wishing to speak will be recognized or must be recognized. I'm not sure. Um, and I understand that, that may be a stronger, but either way, mm -hmm. they will be recognized, whether they must be recognized or not. Was just will little... and must. How about that? Okay. <laughs> I'm fine with that if you want to say that. That's fine. <coughs> so, okay. So you're... you're moving that we change it to will and must, well, must and will uh, be. My preference is to keep it as it is with will, but I can ask if other people. Uh... I think it's all equivalent. I think yeah. it's all just like it must. I just added that as a decoration. It seemed like a better <laughs> word to use. That's what I, mean. I think the sentiment is identical to how it was. So, Okay, so now we're going to go to Councillor Dwight and then go back to Councillor Klein. Historically, the reason the issue of um, well, it, at this point, saying defamation, it, it wasn't the, originally the term wasn't defamation, but the critical concern was um, municipal employees who uh, enjoy protections should enjoy protections from being um, accused or challenged uh, in such a way that it actually could clearly constitute what would be construed as defamation. The, the employees were particularly vulnerable, uh, especially when people were, um, uh, well, for instance, somebody accusing a parking enforcement officer of deliberately um, shorting their time and, and at one point came up and accused the parking enforcement officer of lying, said she was mendacious, uh, was prepared to announce her address and things like that. Uh, it was ruled out of order, and I think appropriately so. Mm -hmm. Because that's actually a personal attack, and I think the concern is personal attacks, and not only for employees but for other citizens. Um, trying to maintain the decorum also means, you know, as I used to say, we're fair game. We signed up for this. We're public figures, and this is a, it's appropriate. Uh, well, it's not appropriate necessarily, but it is. It's it's allowed to say whatever the hell you want to say about us. Mm -hmm. But individuals who are not so protected who don't actually volunteer to sign up to be public figures, 
um, should not be subjected to the same criticism. So, for instance, if a citizen took an issue with another citizen and started saying horrible things about them, the concern was uh, one a violation of those individual rights, but also maintaining the decorum of the chamber so you don't lose control of of at least managing how we proceed. And and arguably, you know. If one person started attacking another person, an individual who's not a public figure, uh, you are essentially becoming, I don't know, mass live. So that's my concern. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, I should say, go ahead. Yeah, no. Yeah, I, I probably should have preferenced the whole, every, the whole rule changes. I definitely didn't wake up and say, this is going to be fun to bring to the city council. <laughs> I did this because I, I view it as my job to correct a couple actual problems that we have so these are the next one is also a technical problem which is not fun to deal with um i think that especially given um last year's civil court civil action um i think it was middlesex county about about what the school committee of natick did i think actually we we can't say that uh, we Language that is defamatory is only defamatory if it's been adjudicated that. We can't just decide. And if, unless you know that, you have to err on the side of protecting uh, free speech. So someone could stand up and say, oh, I don't, I don't like this teacher in the schools. I mean, that's a free speech right. I can't say, don't say that. And that's exactly what happened in, in Natick. You know? And they said, people were being critical. And they said, well, you cannot, under the rules of the town of Natick, disparage Natick or disparage the schools. Yes, you can. And so I, I actually agree with you that it's uncomfortable. And that's why my approach, hopefully when I adopted from you, watching you as council president, has been more to try to um, state my reasons and persuade people rather than order them or shut them down. I always say, please remember if the shoe were on the other foot, how would you feel? You know, I, I try to do that, but I just don't think I mean, this is a result of an ACLU action against Natick, you know. So that's why I feel it's a necessary thing. So, a little background, but I think Councillor Klein was waiting to say something. Yeah, I wanted to put a little bit of a finer point on the, the must and the will, um, and to follow up on what Councillor Carney said. I think that um, when if you leave the word will in there, this um, essentially is a procedural clause. It's, it just kind of talks about how we will proceed in doing public comment. Whereas when you say must, um, it is, I think, kind of getting close to some of the issues that we brought up when we um, debated the uh, conduct clause, or the so-called conduct clause that was brought up. Um, and again, I think if somebody wants to yell something out while somebody else is making a public comment, they haven't been recognized by the president. Um, so this kind of has the, the um, it's language that essentially would shut down any other comment that comes from the floor. And so I do think that will is sufficient and must, um, must just has that, that kind of ring of um, keeping people in line, essentially, I see. that I think isn't necessary. I see what you're saying. It's funny because you're, you're interpreting the exact opposite way that I intend. You, you think it means that People can't say anything unless they're recognized. What I'm saying is that if people want to come to the city council, they must be recognized. You see the difference? Mm -hmm. So it's actually not, from my perspective, an intent. It, it was actually not cracking down on freedom of speech. It was the exact opposite. It was saying if someone wants to come to the council and speak, they must be able to speak. But it so essentially has ramifications for people that want to call something out, whether in support or against what somebody's saying um, when they're doing their public speaking. Okay. Well, on that point, I'll, I'll disagree with you. I think I have a different interpretation. However, if there's a, if you are more comfortable with the word will than must, then that's that's fine with me because my intent is just that, you know, it's it's quite the opposite of shutting everyone down. It's making sure everyone is is heard, um, in, in the city council. And just like defamation, if someone like, you know, makes some kind of demonstration, like you can't order them to to cease. Okay. So if the council is more happy with will than must, I think they're equivalent words. I think they mean exactly the same thing in the sentence. So I guess I'd like to amend um, okay. the amendment to, I don't know exactly how to frame it, to um, 
wishing to speak will be recognized and we that we strike must. It's fine with me. Do I hear a second to that amendment? Second. Okay. Any discussion on that amendment to not change the will to must, but keep it at will? Okay. All those in favor of the amendment, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Very good. Okay. So now we had Councillor Dwight again. Um, again, more context. Um, the we're actually, I'm not sure about this, but I do believe it's true that we're not obliged to actually even have public comment. This is something that actually we do that some other communities have no public comment section. Uh, some other communities, Holyoke, for instance, don't have the rule that preclude or, or uh, restrict the council's or particularly the council president's ability to talk back. Um, and in fact, actually, the council president... <laughs> Uh, so far, and it hasn't been challenged, but we'll actually pick or choose people depending on his or her will and then cut them off or finish them without any prescribed time. I don't recommend that. And I also don't recommend eliminating public comment. But it is actually it, 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 the way it was usually considered the way we did this. It was essentially it was by... Uh, at the council's pleasure, and it, it, the the reason to hear from the public and give the public an opportunity to speak on any issue um, was more important uh, for us. And then when, and I think it was Councilor Adams and others who, who we introduced it as essentially required in all public subcommittee meetings and, sub, and, and other venues where that previously wasn't allowed, actually. Um, so in that context, I actually think is, and I'm the only thing that makes me feel uncomfortable is essentially that um, there is free speech and it should not be dampened it in any way. But at the same time, there are simple elemental uh, prescriptions that can be made that allow for the decorum of the chamber and allow for public comment to uh, move on without... Uh, you know, free speech also includes threats um, that are actionable, but they aren't adjudicated. They haven't been. They haven't been. If someone says, "I'm going to take you out and pound you," <laughs> we, the presiding officer, should be able to have the ability to say, "I'm sorry, that's out of order." Mm -hmm. I mean, there is a potential crime there and a threat of assault but that's not prosecuted or 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 concluded. So I mean, I'm not arguing with the decision of, of uh, the. Natick. I'm just saying, if we, I mean, we could just stop at 4.8 public comment, period, and then get rid of everything else and then just allow whatever happens to happen. You don't need to put, I think, arguably, putting a time limit on it is a restriction and limitation on free speech. Um, the uh, So I, I'm not sure, I, I, I don't know, I, I'm a little uncomfortable just leaving it too wide open insofar as that um, I think we can still accommodate all aspects of free speech and at the same time also be able to at least invest in the presiding officer the ability to at least manage uh, circumstances if they start to spiral out of control. And what I mean by control is, is uh, actual threats, chaos, other horrible things that might happen as opposed to uh, having a clear, uh, having the public get, have an opportunity to speak. I think they're two different things. Thank you. And um, Councilor, may I just respond briefly to that before I recognize you? Thank you. Um, so thank you for those comments and just a, a few um, reactions. Um, so when you talk about free speech, first the, the three minute rule, totally allowable under, under free speech because government has a right to say what, you know, what they call the time, place and manner of speech, if there's a compelling public interest. And so that's why we're allowed to have a three minute rule because there is a compelling interest to have a, um, an efficiently run meeting where everyone has a right to speak. Because after all, free speech is not just about me being able to say something, it's about the collective, it's about everyone in a democratic society being able to be heard. And so if someone can just speak for an hour and everyone else says, you know, I, I have to go home and I, you know, mm -hmm. that doesn't serve free speech. So that's a different category. And then threats is also a different category. 
I'd note that the rule right now doesn't mention anything about threats. It's silent on threats. But threats and what they call fighting words in First Amendment cases are totally separate category. Those are still, I mean, of course, it's, it's just common sense. Someone gets up and says, I'm going to make it makes a legitimate threat against anyone. That's totally different because it incites violence. This is like yelling fire in a crowded theater kind of classical example. Um, so those are not contemplated by this. All I'm, all I'm getting rid of is defamation, which is, you know, in a, in a recent court case and about a rule almost exactly like ours, not exactly, but similar to ours, you just can't, just can't have it that way. And I think the way to do it is a practical matter. I mean, I don't hear many people come up these days. I realize it probably was different in the past, but like, I don't hear many people come up and defame that many people, you know? So I'd rather just, just rather like all things, like we, like when we were discussing the, the civility amendments, Again, I think the presiding officer having discretion to persuade and to request and to ask is the way to, to deal with that issue, rather than having the rules, which I believe is legally problematic. So just a few. So would you like to respond? To it, if I may, and just okay. very briefly, but and I actually, I agree with every point you made. Although it is important to say, time, place, and manner, there were three criteria there, manner being one of them. And um, we don't actually, give the presiding officer the opportunity to at least manage the manner. And in, in, if we eliminate the defamation clause, and I absolutely agree that that's true, but it's already, it's already been, that's been decided. And so it's inappropriate to have it here. But manner is something that you choose and quite well and do quite well to do with uh, suggestions and recommendations and, and requests. And in fact, I'm, unfairly took some heat for it recently. Um, the, uh, but I think there should be a little more bite in there that you have the right to overrule somebody if they do not um, comport themselves in the manner that's appropriate that is yet to be defined, I acknowledge. Mm -hmm. so. Thank you. So, Councillor Carney, thank you for your patience. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm concerned because um, I do know when this when this language was written, and and yeah, in our history, I mean, public comment has probably been around. Well, I think Mary Fo Mayor Ford uh, initiated the use of public comment, mm -hmm. and I think Councilor Barge may have been on the council um, then when it was first started. So mm -hmm. it's not that long. We don't have a we don't have a really long history of it, but I know that there was concern. Uh, uh, and, uh, and the distinction between elected officials and city employees who are public figures. I mean, if there's a way to get around that um, uh, prohibiting remarks that clearly constitute defamation, no, but maybe a more general statement as alluded to by Councillor Dwight that generally says that the uh, public comment, uh, some reference to the First Amendment, which can be regulated in time, place, and manner, and so that would then allow uh, maybe a, some sort of reference for, to the reason because the, the protection of city employees was the intention and I think that's still an appropriate um, intention for that, that it shouldn't necessarily be the place to um, disparage, disparage in other ways, um, go after city employees, whereas, as Councilor Dwight said, we're elected officials and in a different and, or other or other people in the in the chamber. I don't know that it's appropriate to um, allow that. And so I don't know. It's codified here. Maybe strictly having a reference to the First Amendment allowances for regulation and time, manner, and place. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. Thank you, um, Mr. Mayor. Do you want to be recognized, please? Sorry to wade into this. It just um, hey, you're welcome to. We've been looking at this on the school committee because this was actually a um, school committee, um, and they were actually following a MASC, -M which is the Mass Association of School Committee model policy. Hmm. Um, and to go further, the model policy said that you can't get up and speak about school employees. Um, that you're not allowed to speak. And this was a person who was basically saying, you know, my child was bullied and Mrs. So-and-so didn't do anything about it and Principal So-and-so didn't do anything about it and they shut the person down following that policy. And the policy actually, the model policy also says 
you can't say anything bad about school employees and you can't say anything bad about the school community, which again gets to your point about the broader community. Um, and so again, that's a model policy of MASC that NADIC had in place um, and the court found that you couldn't, um, you know, that you couldn't, uh, like you described, uh, defam you couldn't suppress speech um, by right. having it be adjudicated by a, by a chair as defamatory because defamatory is illegal. Um, so that I just wanted to clarify that that whole issue of employees was actually at issue in this case. And that's what they were using to say to these speakers, like, you can't talk about school employees here. Right. Um, and the court said, no, actually, you can. Right. So uh, I just wanted to, to make that clarification given the where the conversation was headed. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank the chair. Um, then, so uh, are you um, actually taking that to assume that the sim a similar process would be adjudicated for city employees from a city body, a city council, that it's okay by uh, law? We can't limit people's um, conduct or manner of speech with regard to city employees or anyone else for that matter. I think that, well, I mean, I think that's the distinction that, had been made, including by us and by school committees, and I think what happened in this court case was the court ruled that that's not a that's not a distinction you can make. Um, so that's all. So I I don't think that you could do it on the city side any more than the, I mean we're looking at it. MASC is looking at its model policy, how to revise it. Um, but I think the bottom line from what at least what that court ruled was that you can't draw that distinction. So um, the manner. So the manner of speech is not something that can be relate, rel, regulated in that way. Yeah, but what's being regulated here is the content. I mean, you're, you know, you can put time, place, and manner and say three minutes and say everybody gets three minutes, but you don't get to say you get three minutes, but you can't talk about this particular subject. Um, and in this case, defamation is a, you know, it's a well-defined, you know, legal charge. And so that's why they decided that allow, and, you know, this was... This was some folks who had been, actually, I think they were actually, one of them was like a former school committee member. It's a pretty interesting case. Um, and so, and the chair was, I think, a little, well, from my reading of it, the chair was pretty much like, you can't talk, like, you must stop talking right now. Um, and so it was a, it may be an extreme example of a case, but for whatever reason, that's the ruling they got to. And they found that that MASC policy was unconstitutional mm -hmm. and then just one final it hasn't point. been challenged in any higher courts but that's you know it's a superior court case one final point then um so it just seems as though um we really can't ever call anyone out of order for any of the content that they are speaking um well, I think the, but I do think some things like you were saying yes. like fighting words or incitement or things like that I think okay. would be appropriate Okay, so fighting words, totally. threats, things yeah. like that. Okay. Because those don't, those have been exceptions to, you know, for the, you know. I think technically like, obscenity is actually, you know, sure. you can bar that, although I wouldn't because I don't care. But I yeah. mean, you, there are certain things that you can still. But I mean, it's a definitely a big change because it has been the practice of this city council to kind of call people out of order if they're disparaging uh, city employees or other city residents and so i think that you know that's that's something that we'd have to know and deal with if people <clears throat> cho chose to you know just use the pulpit to speak yeah. about their neighbors i mean ultimately the employment law protection for employees is that you can't you know they have a right to be you know like if the school committee is going to do a disciplinary hearing for superintendent they have a right to be present they have a right to be part of that they have a right you know that's so it's more that's where the employment right really is um obviously a member of the public is not a supervisor of them and they're not a you know so it's not like that employment right is being violated so that's but yeah so so Good change so, so councillor bidwell and then Councilor shara <coughs> so, so uh, uh, originally i thought i thought the the focus is on the Concept of defamation itself, and and that's what was what was stricken. But I gather that it, that if we were to replace defamation with disparagement, we'd have the same problem. If, 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 yeah. the, the spirit of it is yeah. any criticism is fair game, even if it yep. is uh, a specific employee of the city. 
which Abs which I'm uncomfortable with, and I wish we could uh, say something about it. But from what I'm hearing, that we may have to live with that and rely on the discretion of the chair. Councilor Scherer. Um, I don't I don't know if this is just going to make this more sticky, and I and I don't know if um you reviewed this when you were um thinking about this change, but. Is it worth noting what it says in uh, under Mass General Law, under Open Meeting Law, which we know we're compelled to follow? Um, so I'm sorry, you want to reference Open Meeting Law in the public comment section? Yes. In order to reinforce that, just so we know what what Open Meeting Law says. Um, what does it I'm say? I'm not sure. What, yeah. what what part of Open Meeting Law would you want to reference? So Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20G says, mm -hmm. quote, no person shall address a meeting of a public body without permission of the chair, and all persons shall at the request of the chair be silent. No person shall disrupt the proceedings of a meeting of a public body. If, after clear warning from the chair, a person continues to disrupt the proceedings, the chair may order the person to withdraw from the meeting. And if the person does not withdraw, the chair may authorize a constable or other officer to remove the person from the meeting, end quote. Unless yeah, that's been amended since I left. To, to that I point. just think to answer your, qu answer your question, well, you want to add on to the point, point of order. Uh, however, at public comment, the meeting is not convened. Uh, so mm -hmm. actually, that's in the context of uh -huh. the meeting. But when we do public comment, and there was a reason for that. He was, uh, but so that's just that's a finer point, but uh -huh. it's actually relevant. The meeting is not convened, so the rules of those prescribed under under that chapter is, wouldn't apply necessarily. So you may may want to think about that. Well, just to respond to that point generally, I mean, I think I guess my preference is to just. Say yes. That's a good thing to remember. That there's a whole body of law about public meetings in the open meeting law, as um, Council Sheriff points out. I wouldn't want to like, import it into our rules because it already exists, you know, or reference it. Um, that too. I mean, who knows? That might change as well. As that might be sort of receptive to some of the principles that came out of the Natick decision at a certain point. So that would be my preference on that. But I think that's a point well taken to remember. Um, so anyone else over here? It's quiet over here. It's awfully quiet over there. Yeah. Um, so Councilor Dwight. I would also add, you know, in the context, for instance, how we, we subscribe to the uh, Roberts Rules of Order. That's how we conduct our polity and debate. And there's limitations. And we grant the authority to the to the presiding officer to to cut off debate if they feel it's redundant or if it's exhaustive. Um, there's a wide flexibility to suppress speech here among the the representative body. It is possible that that decision may somehow impact that as well. Although the, the open meeting law mass general law issues do, do define um, limitations uh, from the participants and also from the public in, in many respects, because uh, this is this is a process and it is a meeting, and its ultimate goal is to actually do the work of the people, but not at the exclusion of the people. And then I think that's important. And I, so I actually, I, as I said, I have no problem with this deletion now. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm comfortable with this. Um, and at some point, I think, and this is probably a discussion when we do the rules again, but. Something that more clearly defines how how conduct can and possibly should be managed, given the given uh, the various challenges that might present themselves, while at the same time abiding by all the tenets and the spirit of free speech. So a heavy lift, not for now. I'm comfortable, uh, uh, particularly to accommodate the current ruling to delete this language. But at some point, I hope in the future that we will consider how we're going to craft this in a more artful way. And I and that's not to say you have not been artful in this. It's been <laughs> impressive. So I hope it's not inartful of me to say, have fun with that. I won't be part of those conversations. <laughs> <laughs> this is my last rule change. Uh, I'm hanging up my <laughs> hanging up my hand. Oh man. Uh, All right. So counselor. One more one more question. Um, because I don't have the copy of the rules in front of me, but uh, we do state in the beginning of our rules that we follow Robert's rules. We used to, at any rate, yep, state that. Yep, yep. So if the case is that we follow Robert's rules, I don't have my book here, but it's the same language that's in the open meeting law. 
Um, does anybody have a copy of the book there? But I think in public comment, it's, it's basically, yeah, it's basically the same language that um, Councilor Sierra just. No, it's mean I have to go find it. Well, yes, it's, it's in a book. I'll find it. But I, I mean, in that sense, we're kind of covered because we say we follow Robert's rules, and so we do. And really, we follow everything that's in there. These are in over and above, over and above what what Robert's rules specify. So I think that um, I, I wouldn't even mind going back to just the, the suggestion that somebody had that said public comment, period, because um, it's already spelled out in Robert's rules what our, you know, what we have to do. And it's pretty much identical to the open meeting law language, if you can find it. But I have read it in there. Thank you. I, I think the... What we have at the very beginning of our rules is something to the effect of where our rules are ambiguous or, or, or do not answer a question, Robert's rules shall resolve the question. Well, it seems ambiguous. Um, I would like to have a, a clear rule of our own that makes it obvious that, you know, we're, that, but, that we have a very liberal interpretation of free speech. And so that's why I've written the rule. In, in this particular way. Would it be, would it, do you find that there's anything that counters what, what's written in Robert's Rules or in the open meeting law, which I think is the same? Well. I mean, because if, if the suggestion was made as a reference to the open meeting law or even a reference to the rules in Robert's Rules, unless we really think that we want to, and what did you say, go over and above or in some way, unless we think that our manner is really very different than what's already enacted in open meeting law and adopted in Robert's rules. Well, I mean, just to, let me see. Um, I mean, of course, open meeting law is not reflected in Robert's rules. Right. Um, that's a separate law and we have to abide by the law. So whatever the open meeting law says, is, that, is a, that is background for the council and how it conducts itself. So we don't have to do anything about that. That's the law. We don't have to import that or reference it or copy it or anything like that. So that's that. As far as Robert's rules, um, I try to be right up on the rules. I'm not sure what it says about public comment. But I know that this is, this is what we should – we cannot have anything that references defamation. You know, for example, I do want to – I don't want to have it to say public comment period because I do want to have a liberal policy about language translation, which I worked with Councilor Shera to develop, you know. I want it to be clear that everyone has equal time. I want everyone to have three minutes. I want those rules that are actually traditions in the Northampton City Council. I want to keep our traditions while improving the, the, the First Amendment issues, which I think we have. Um, that's my goal. Who else? There's even more to this rule, but we haven't even I know. Councilor Bidwell. Well, no, I, I have not found anything regarding public participation and public comment. Everything that I find in here regarding decorum is just decorum among the members of the body and how they address one another and when you can and cannot speak of. And it has such sections as being seated during an interruption by the chair. <laughs> so Remember that, everybody. Remember that. So, but but it, it does not seem to pertain to how the body reacts to... Yes. Open open meeting or questions from the public. Well, well. I thought I was so, we move on to the next section, and you can always come back. Um, the other problem I am trying to fix with this is in section two. Um, the current rule says all timely filing. This is five point one one. All ordinances, excuse me, all orders, ordinances, resolutions, contracts, and any other written business to be transacted by the City Council shall be filed with the administrative assistance of the City Council by close of business three days prior to a regular council meeting in accordance with the open meeting law to allow for re review and timely posting. Okay. So the open meeting law is 48 hours. It is not three days at the close of business. And I think that is a rule that I'm not even sure the genesis of it. Maybe I did it. I don't remember. But I think it was the council trying to make it so that the council office didn't have a last-minute avalanche of stuff to get on, you know, like, oh, you can put it on. It's, it's 645. You have plenty of time to put on these five orders. 
We, we want to say, no, you need to get it to us in a timely way. But three days is not, that doesn't work as a practical matter. And I don't think has worked when, you know, as any, any time I've been council president or councilor Dwight or whoever, so. If I may, a little bit of historical background on that. It actually, that came at the um, request of, of uh, Pamela Powers at the time she was administrative assistant because there was, there were two counselors who remained unnamed, but who did uh, late filings that became very difficult for at the 11th hour for review and for inclusion in the agenda. And at the same time, she was being challenged by saying that she was not doing her, pro her job properly by submitting these things. So we embedded that back in the day to prevent okay. the overload. But again, you know, it was a rule that was designed to accommodate an, uh, uh, a problem that was already occurring. Um, right. It has not occurred because you don't see that uh, behavior being, uh, most counselors are very considerate about how the process goes. Um, I mean, well, I can speak to it more than I can in this respect, but it was, it was born out of a need that doesn't seem to exist right now. Got it. And if, I would also say, given the fact that we're concerned about redundancy anyway, I don't think it's in, necessary to include agenda shall be published in accordance with the open meeting law because what there no, was. No, it's not. Get, so I just kept that because you know, it was I was in, in there, there before, already. and frankly, I don't want to pe make people feel nervous that well, we're not doing that. But well, I, I appreciate that, but I said, given given the previous discussion, it's unnecessary to because it is presumed that all our our rules comport with open meeting law. So yep. to, to say to say it, we could say that virtually, as Council Sherrod yeah. proposed, we could say it virtually after every item. We could say after everything. Yeah. Perhaps we can. it's necessary here. It's probably not. Perhaps we can keep it just so it's just clear to the public. I mean, these rules are in part for the public as well as, as us, in a sense. I mean, they don't read them, really. <laughs> you know, we barely do. We barely do. <laughs> but I think that um, maybe just keep it here would be my preference I, just for fun. I have no overt objection. I, I'm just saying that that I, mean, I hear you, though. you, you yeah. there was an opportunity to yeah. uh, and in fact I would argue it even bears more weight given the ambiguity yeah. to reference open meeting law yeah. in the first part in this part yeah. it's we anything that we did about filing in violation of open meeting law would be quickly evident yeah. if you take my point yeah so, Councillor Carney. Uh, just to get, uh, I do agree with that and don't see that there would be any problem with just referencing because there there is specific language in open meeting law that, I mean, I don't mean to restate the language, but if people were really wanting to study that, they could clearly look and see what is, you know, um, allowable, that they could be asked to leave by the chair, and if they didn't um, respond, there could be a constable that's called in because that's what we're I don't think it's ever happened but that is what the open meeting law says so just a reference to that certainly if we're going to have the reference under agendas um, I agree that it's more important to have it under the reference to uh, public comment than agendas okay. any other discussion on this first paragraph um, let me cover the other two as quickly as possible. Um, 5.1.2. So this was presentation to the council mayor. What's being deleted is every new ordinance, order, and resolution or other matter to be voted or to be submitted for city council action shall be forwarded to the mayor, council president, administrative assistant, city council. My problem with this is it's in the passive voice. I mean, who's forwarding it? Like, are we hitting forward on an email? Or what's what's going on? I just want to be very clear what the responsibilities are. I think the whole point is that the administrative assistant regularly liaises with the mayor's office so that the mayor's office knows what's on our agenda, and, and that office can submit items to us, and we communicate. So that's why I changed that. Um, and finally, just um, similar, uh, with, um, there's no removals from 5.1.3. It's just... Clarif clarifying additions. This is if, at my discretion, actually this maybe answers some of the concerns about the, this getting stuff at the last minute. If in fact like 50 things come into the council office for to put them on the agenda, 10 minutes for the old meeting law deadline of 48 hours, I want to be able to say, 
No, it's my discretion that we are not going to do those. You know, and I'll make a decision. The mayor may say, well, actually, this one's extremely important, so do it. And I may say, okay, you know, but there's discretion there. There's therefore a rule that says that if the council president exercises their discretion to not put something on the agenda, the council can petition it on at the next meeting. So you don't have a council president who just bottles everything up unfairly. Um, so I just want, to, want that to be, to be clear that um, the requests are going to come from a city, from the city council member or a city council member or the mayor. In other words, it's not like a member of the public who says, I want you to do this, and then I have to, you know. Um, so there's that reason. And then I clarify that we're talking about regular council meetings. And the other one, I think, is just a clarifying kind of typographical change, that item. Okay, Councilor Dwight. Uh, I think share. Uh, rock solid. I agree with this. Okay. I think that's, uh, it, it clarifies the intent. That was always the intent. And uh, the presiding officer sets the agenda, which presumes that the presiding officer also has the right not to include items in the agenda because the council president, the presiding officer's obligation is to present an agenda that is manageable and, 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 and can be facilitated. But at the same time, embedding language that prevents basically sending something off to Coventry and not, and, you know, and, and killing it by never accepting it on the agenda, it's very good to include that language to make sure that that's the case. So I, I very much agree with this one. Thank you. If I had to make a closing, oh, Council Chair, actually, you had asked to be recognized. Um, do we need to clarify what? what we mean by petition since this is happening outside of a regular meeting so outside of a public meeting mm -hmm. this would be happening privately by two counselors to the council president mm -hmm. um do we need to say what that means to petition the council president in that way you say ask Request. i think it'd be like a common just like a common use word you know plain plain meaning but I mean, what do you think i mean no i just i, I just want to make it yeah. you know at that point, you're only dealing with three counselors, but you know, since this is happening outside of an open meeting, do yep. we want to be we want to be careful about that? Absolutely. The difference would be this is a question of scheduling and putting things on the agenda rather than deliberation on the substance of an issue. That would be the difference. Like if they were to say, three counselors should persuade the council president on the merits of it, then that would raise red flags because, as as you suggest and point out. We we can't have discuss we can't have serial or group communication on matters within our jurisdiction outside of public session, but scheduling something, please put this on the agenda for consideration. That's fine for the open meeting room. That's an important distinction. Thank you. Anything else? If I had to make a closing pitch, it would be this. It's not fun to to <laughs> to try and put these together. I, I'm trying to like serve the whole council here and correct problems that I think that we have. Um, so my request would be that, you know, obviously the council can make its decision about what it wants to do. I would request you adopt this language. And then if we want to come back with a more sub, uh, uh, detailed conversation about these particulars at a later time, that's fine. Feel free to do that. It's okay. And they can even go to committee and we can have a real conversation. But if it's okay, I'd like to adopt it as written with the amendment um, because I think that solves some problems that we have procedurally in the council. So that'd be my appeal to you on that point. So, okay. Any dis further discussion? Are we ready to vote on it? Okay. Uh, two thirds vote will be required. Only one vote is required. In other words, we don't need a second reading on this. So if there's no other discussion, I would ask for a roll call to approve this rule change, please. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Yes. 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 Councilor Lavard. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Yes. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you for that discussion. Um, so now, let's see. We're going to move on with this. Um, we have a number of ordinances now referred. Five, six, seven. Oh, Mr. Mayor. I was just going to ask if it, if you'd be willing to entertain taking out of order uh, 19011 um, that. Uh, uh, Ms. Mish was here to speak to. Oh, that's, yeah, of course. I should have thought of that myself. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Without objection, so. We didn't realize there'd be so much free speech about that. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, uh, I'm going to order a constable to remove you in a yes. second. <laughs>
we have constables or Scipio tables or what? A, what I was going to uh, say is we'd have to hire a constable if we were to follow Robert's rules of orders or whatever it is. Yeah, sometimes people are named a constable. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm just saying. 19.011 ordinance relative to bicycle share services is on second reading. Motion to approve this, please. Made by so Councillor Klein and seconded by Councillor Nash. So discussion on this. Uh, last time we had substantial discussion. Ms. Mish, would you like to comment? Do you, are you here with a presentation? or? I know you have amendments you've submitted. So you're welcome to describe that or anything else. Sure, thank you. Um, I did receive the comments back from um, uh, Laura, uh, and also I had a quick correspondence clarification with um, Councillor Bidwell, um, just to make sure I understood what your questions were from the last, uh, from the first reading um, a couple weeks ago. So I think you all, I, I think it sounded to me as though you just wanted some clarification. I think you were interpreting it the right way, but you just wanted to make sure that you were interpreting that way. So um, I'm proposing that um, an additional phrase be added to the electric assist scooter because there was a reference to e-scooter or e-SMD um, further down in the ordinance. So by adding... Um, just clarification in the definition of what um, electric assist means that that um, refers or can also be referred to as an e-scooter or e-SMD, which is a shared mobility device. So that was one item. Under service area, um, there was a question about what private programs were versus um, other shared mobility um, programs. And though that the intention is to differentiate any programs that are not operated um, by the city or um, contracted by the city. So um, I've added a proposed language that could be added to that section. So permits for private programs not operated for or by the city. Um, and then again, clarification, I guess, in that same section about um, what a core neighborhood is, and I've suggested that we, instead of referring to it as core, that it's an urban neighborhood um, more specifically defined as our urban residential A, urban residential B, and urban residential C districts. Um, and then sections D and G, some minor changes, just to clarify that it's a shared mobility um, device program operator and um, G, all permitted shared mobility devices within a shared mobility device program. So. Thank you. Um, any questions for Ms. Mish? Uh, oh, Councilor Nash. Um, is for, on C, service area, um, we list a number of zones here. We have URB, A, B, C, and I'm wondering if we might also want to add um, locations where we actually have some of these places now, some of the zones like central business, entranceway, or, and possibly where we'd like to see some of these stations. Because <laughs> I, I, I think the intent here is to say with, within our zoning, here is the zones where we will allow these types of um, setups. Right. Um. Well, actually, the the assumption is that that's the, those are the prime places already, central business and the immediate surrounding areas. That's that's the best picking, <laughs> and so we don't want these programs just to come in and take over in the central business district and then forget about all the neighborhoods, because really, for a system to work, there needs to be you know connections to the neighborhoods so, th so the people can come back and forth. Sure. And so we have no um, concerns that that's where, um, particularly for scooter share. Scooters are much for much shorter distances, so it's much harder to say you want to operate into the neighborhoods because that means you're going farther distant, further distances and it's not quite as um, the uh, a scooter isn't um, as optimal to be used going further out or to Florence Center. It's mo so um, our concern really was that um, we wanted to make sure we're serving all neighborhoods with any system that comes in. 
Yeah, I, I agree with that concept, but we're using zone, you know, our zoning language here saying where we would like these located and is this is the intent to have this line up with our zoning that in, you know, that under allowed uses under URA, you'll see a use, you know, you can put one of these stations in? No, it's not considered, it wouldn't be in a zoning district because it's something that operates on the public infrastructure and within the network. So this isn't a, a necessarily a, a, um, a use like you'd see in our table of uses. So I, again, the idea really is to say um, that um, we want to make sure we're serving areas outside of just the commercial cores and we're serving beyond that. Um, so, and so I think I think you are in agreement. So maybe we're saying the you're same saying thing. Saying the same thing because really, <laughs> you're totally saying the same thing because the ordinance assumes that these will be in those zones that you just mm -hmm. described. But it says that an operator can't just come in and concentrate there. They also have to make sure the system is in URA, URB, URC. So I think you're both saying the same things. That was a good one. Yeah. So collectively, all of these areas need to be addressed. That's what it's saying. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, yes I, 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 I agree. Say, saying the same thing. And I Caroline think, and I do that all the I time. I think back <laughs> at our last meeting, we all, we all understood the concept, agreed with the concept. It's just, a, it just the language seemed to mix up on the one hand, talking about core neighborhoods or now <laughs> urban neighborhoods with mentioning specific zoning districts. And it just, I think it struck me, and maybe others it would be clearer, if, if we want to say these services have to, have to provide service in these areas, then why not just list them out? Um, and even if it's assumed that they're in central business, then, well, it doesn't hurt to say that. Then, then, then there'd be a clear listing of where these services must be in operation. And it would be central business in your A and your B or C and your C. And if there's others that we feel it's really important that they also serve, then just because I, I, I still think it is open to a little bit of interpretation where we combine a reference to urban neighborhood and Florence Center within specific zoning districts. So I was, it would be clearer to me anyway if we. So if we if you zone. just added central business to that list too, downtown and, downtown Northampton. Yes, and 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 then I don't think the the phrase core neighborhood or urban neighborhood would be necessary if we're okay. delineating by the zoning district. That's I fine. Just in just yep. in the sake of clarity. Sure. Is that. Consistent council Nash with what you were trying to get at as well, or maybe we're not all talking about the same thing. Oh, we say you were. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm reading. laughs> Any other questions? Discussion, but maybe add a but not limited to because then you also want but to not, capture but not limited to, to capture but not limited to but not limited to absolutely but not limited to must be in these but not limited to yeah. yes that would be, that would be the spirit of it he just mentioned some other intermediary zones that we're assuming would be part of that right so now if you're going to go list them you need to include them yeah. or else or else it'll be you know you can't do it there right mm -hmm. So Highway business yeah, or something. I'm sorry about. It. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds right. Like, remember the transitional zone you mentioned on King Street? The, yeah. Right, right. That, like, yeah, I mean that as a possible place that it could be. Yeah, I think the I think the idea. I mean, I know the idea is that we don't want to leave the neighborhoods out of it. We assume all the commercial districts are going to be covered or could be covered. Um, so the idea really is to say. You know that that's why originally it said core neighborhoods, but then we, then um, there was a concern about what do those mean. So I guess if we said you know minimally um, um, have to in addition to commercial districts, um, these uh, systems need to minimally serve residential districts, including A, B, and C, or something like that. What if um. <laughs> Um, part of this would be driven by demand, right? I mean, re regardless of what the zoning district is, if there's a demand for use, we just want to make sure that we encourage and some extent require 
these services to be put in places where there may be demand. <coughs> Fair to say, right? And if that's the case, then therefore, maybe you could say like a per, only a percentage of an operator's locations can be located in central business or put a cap on that and force it out beyond that to wherever. Because if the real issue is you don't want them downtown, then just say that. You follow what I'm, I'm suggesting? Originally, we were concerned about, um, we originally the, um, there was a proposal that said it couldn't operate in Central Business District. Uh -huh. um, because we were concerned about sort of that cannibalizing our current system. But then as it went through the process, um, there was a lot of discussion about not being um, proprietary with the city's system and allowing sort of the free market to do what it's going to do, except um, we know that for certain systems, it probably doesn't make sense to go beyond the central business district. But we, we want to make sure that we're equitable and we're reaching other areas besides just the central business district. So the goal now is not to, to say you're not allowed in, the, in central business or downtown Northampton, but really you also have to serve these other areas. You can't just pick that prime location. Can you then say at least two or at least three or some number of the following areas? You pick which ones, but in other words, not all central business. And then it could just be, or like I say, <clears throat> you know, no more than one quarter of the locations can be located in central business. If, if that's the real issue, I guess, as I read, it, I just don't see, maybe I'm not seeing what you said. It's likely since you, you, you have the expertise and I, I don't, but, um, it seems like it doesn't really prevent things from being concentrated in central business. Am I wrong? It says operate throughout the city's urban neighborhoods, including A, B, and C, but that could also include central business. So, Right. Yeah. So we, we do want to say, yes, you can come and operate in central business. But that can't be the only place you operate. Okay, so uh, uh, Councillor Dwight, you know, as originally discussed, the the main concern was uh, a private investor coming in saying, "I just want to, I want to throw something up downtown and just leave it there." We in multiple private systems doing that. We have a cluster of all sorts. We have the mail box, the uh, newspaper box syndrome, right? The uh, where all of a sudden. There's stations for various services all over the place and abandoned vehicles and so on and all the associated problems that you start to see in larger uh, larger communities. At the same time, underserving the broader community, which is uh, Bike Share, Valley Bike Share does expand out in the larger community. And, and basically we want to say, if you want to come here and run a private service um, that would be in competition with Valley Bike Share, then you have to provide all the services that Valley Bike Share provi provides. And essentially, is what we're trying to push. We're saying that you have to rhyme with what we've already, as a city, have described what we want, as opposed to cherry picking your lots and, you know, on one hand, competitively damaging uh, Valley Bike Share, and two, creating uh, various cluster hazards, and at the same time, underserving a community that we're trying to. To, that that are already underserved with uh, transportation systems. So yep. I, that was the That's ethos. Right. So, yep. in, in the, in, and so, uh, you know, and we're tr struggling to try and say in such a way so that it makes sense and sounds legally correct and not creating an unfair competition application pro issue. And so uh, I think that's the struggle that we're trying to find the terms that are fair and just at the same time promote this idea i mean personally i would say but i guess we can't say the language that has to rhyme with the current uh, uh community system because that that actually gives us an advantage in some way as well so, so valley bike share is your public option for right. uh right well, just say um may only be issued for systems that operate throughout the city um and it must include ura urb urc and let yeah. me just say that all of them or one of them 
Oh, all, all yeah. That, that's what Valley Bike Share does now. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would just yeah. say and must include. Right. And yeah. must include. Yeah. So it also include any anything more. But you could pick any other combination. So long as you include those. But right. you have to at least have yeah. those served. Yeah. When we say operate, what do we mean? Have a location in? Yeah. Have a, a charging station. What is it? A, a rack or yeah. start? What is it? Um, yeah, so t um, there, if they're dockless, then um, sometimes they ha there are sort of um, uh, stationary, yeah, there's geofencing that allows you to operate within a certain geographic area, and if you go outside of that, then there may be negative ramifications. So we just want to make sure that if there's this dockless system, they're not, you know, um, just um, creating a small pocket where they can be operating operational, but that they can you can take the um, scooters and know that you can pick them up in all these different places, um, and they wouldn't be then rebalanced only back to downtown. But in fact, it would be okay to have them scattered throughout because most many of the newer systems now don't have stations; they're dockless yeah, and they're they stationless. I know we all want to move on from this, but <laughs> have have a physical presence or a physical outpost, some, something even that in in at least your A, B, and C, and anything else you want to add is a requirement. But 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 I, I do get the fact that operating hadn't even occurred to us to look at this part of it. But operating, what what does it mean when you have a dockless system? What does it mean to operate? So, but so provide that some definition um, in at least known districts A, you, you, you are A, B, and C, and that's the bare minimum. If you want to go anywhere else beyond that, great. Briefly, what about operate and be available in? Be available. Operate and be available. And serve. And serve. And serve. Councilor Dwight. Uh, uh, good. That goes to my question, which is dockless systems basically, as you said, they have, they have, they have, uh, uh, GPS fencing, right? Right. So that means if someone takes it beyond that fencing limit that they were considered stealing it. Is that the idea? <laughs> yeah, or they'd be charged or something. There's, there's a surplus charge. Yeah. So, yeah, so as a technology change, this gets, becomes problematic. So I think the, the deliberately vague language of operation mm -hmm. and uh, or use right. should, yeah. I mean, maybe... Because who knows, GPS fencing goes, you know, 5G system comes in, suddenly, I don't know, everything goes to hell. Right. And we have to, we have to change it. But at least in this instance, it does require that their GPS fencing cover the breadth of, of the bulk of Northampton. Right. And the idea is this sets up the parameters for it to be administratively, you know, issued. So people right. come in for permits and they're going to have to show how do you... How are you meeting this criteria that you're operating in all of, in these neighborhoods? Okay. Uh, Councilor Klein. I have um, kind of a, a broader overarching question that um, maybe I'm missing something here, but this is relative to bike share services. But how how do these rules how do, how are, how do, how are these regulations not going to apply to individuals using bicycles? I mean, they will. So that somebody rides a bike, whether it's their own bike or a bike share bike, and they decide to um, chain it to a bench, they could be <clears throat> could be subject to being impounded. Correct? Um, yes. So we're creating essentially regulations that are supposed to be ensuring that bike share systems don't um, dockless systems don't you know, put bikes on poles that exist or something like that. But we're essentially, I feel like we're, we want to incentivize people to ride their bicycles as much as possible. Um, and then we're creating regulations that we're not, we don't have the means of publicizing widely and, and to the general public. And so there's a way in which I feel like we're disincentivizing people from riding bikes if we're creating all these rules without publicizing them and that keep them from being able to tie their bicycle up to a tree, for instance, or chain their bicycle up to a tree. So I guess I'm just, I'm also wondering how, how we're enforcing this and are we thinking about 
the ramifications in terms of people encouraging people to ride bicycles in the city. Um, and then there was one other piece to it that I wanted to mention that I forget, but I'll take it in the future. I, I'm just wondering if Alan has something to respond. Yeah, so um, the idea, um, I mean, so it hasn't been a huge problem. What we definitely don't, um, haven't defined up to this point where it's okay to park bikes and where it's not so okay, except sometimes bikes that are cabled to trees for a month and don't move are, are removed now as it is. Um, I don't see this as um, the city going in and, you know, every day doing a sweep like the parking enforcement people, doing a sweep of bicycles that might be two inches off, you know, into the right of way or um, blocking someone's use of a bench or something like that. Um, I think that, you know, we can certainly post um, bicycle parking, you know, um, um, good behavior <laughs> and where you're supposed to be parking your bicycles. Um, and um, I, but I don't feel like it's a disincentive for people to bike. Um, so I guess I'm also wondering if there's kind of a commensurate effort afoot to install more bicycle parking, um, what are they called, receptacles or yeah. installations? Um, yeah, so um, bike racks or bike, bike racks. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, um, where we can, we have been trying to install um, bike racks. Um, whenever a new project comes forward, we require applicants to install bike um, storage facilities. So every new project has to have bike storage. Um, Obviously, we have a lot at Pulaski Park that were put in for as part of the park um, project. But um, I agree that we need more scattered throughout downtown. Um, so I think it's not off the radar. I mean, we're not done, I would say. I just, I, I mean, I guess it, I just wanted to make a comment that I think while we're quick to kind of create these necessary regulations, um, for the purposes stated, I think we also have to be thinking a little bit more holistically about how at the same time we're incentivizing bicycle use. We're not, we're being very sensitive to not disincentivizing it and thinking about all of the different pieces of what that looks like, including increased um, parking spaces for bicycles mm -hmm. and, you know, throughout all the parts of the city. I know when I ride to Florence, I often have to, um, hook my bicycle up to a signpost or something like right. that. So, right. Um, yeah, and this um, specifically um, doesn't prohibit um, locking to a signpost. And I think for that reason is we don't have enough bicycle storage areas. And that's a common place for people to be able to lock or a meter post. In fact, we've experimented with um, um, the bike um, locks or bike posts that are also uh, meter posts um, down um, on Pleasant Street. So I, you know, there are different ways that we're trying to incorporate new um, uh, new locations and new types of uh, bike racks. <laughs> Councilor Klein, I a, oh, can I ask a quick question first? Thanks. Um, Councilor Klein, when you bring this up, are you talking about a specific part of the ordinance? Are you talking about on page two, <clears throat> section G, when it says that if, the, if a bicycle or scooter has certain defects and it is removed and held for 30 days? Is that specifically what you're referring to? Well, in general, that whole, whatever it is, um, Article 4, stopping standing parking, and then it talks about all the different places one can and can't. Um, chain their bicycles and so forth. Okay. Councilor Dwight. I was actually going to propose um, that we modify the language on uh, Section C, service area. Um, it was mentioned, and I thought it was a good suggestion, that uh, it read, operate throughout the city's urban neighborhoods, including but not limited to 
the URA BC districts and Florence Center. So, question first. <clears throat> um, certainly an allowable motion. Probably is a good one too. I'll, I'll support it. But do we want to have a motion to adopt all of planning amendments? First? Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. The, okay. So, so actually, my motion would be to accept the uh, am proposed amendments as they stand now. From the planning department. From the planning department. Is there a second to that? I'll second that. Second. Any discussion on that amendment to adopt the amendments from the planning department? Uh, hearing no discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposing abstentions. So now. And now I would offer an additional amendment to that and changing the striking in after including in a number one section C and add. So it would now re and then including. <laughs> but not limited to. So it would now read urban neighborhoods, including, but not limited to the URA BC uh, districts and Florence Center. I'll uh, second that. Okay. Discussion on that amendment. I, I kind of thought the way we were going with that was more like we were going to tack on after operate, we would say something that like to the effect of, well, exactly. Permits for private programs not operated for or by the city may only be issued for systems that operate in and serve at least the URA, URB, and URC districts. Um, that was, I, maybe that's just like, I got a different. I, I, I actually accept that as a friendly model uh, because I think that it, it imparts the same information in that. Okay. So the maker of the motion and whoever seconded it, Councilor Clark, I believe. So are you fine? Any objection to changing that? Okay, thank you. So just to be clear, the amendment is to change it's at the word operate. So systems that operate in and serve at least the U R A B and C districts that's the amendment good Does that reflect what people have been saying yes oh. i do want florence center. florence center and florence center and, okay so at least in the ura b c districts and florence center good any discussion on that amendment Making progress, Councillor Nash. Could you read it again? <laughs> <laughs> to what you're proposing. I understand the amendment. Uh, it, would, it would say C, service area, section one. Um, this is what the city council does, by the way. So um, this is our job. Um, C, service area. One, uh, permits for private programs not operated for or by the city may only be used for systems that operate in and serve at least the URA, B, C districts and Florence Center, period. But not limited to? That's at least. Okay. 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 Good. Any discussion on the amendment? All those in favor of that amendment, please say aye. 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 Opposing extensions. <clears throat> Any discussion on, on the order itself, the ordinance itself? Um, just very briefly on on that issue on on section that was brought up before on uh, second page um, section G. This is a, a bicycle scooter parked <coughs> in accordance with the section that has one or more of the following defects may be tagged and removed and shall be held by the city for a minimum of thirty days. And then enumerates stuff like no tires or wheels, more one or more warped wheels or frame, missing rusted or broken chain in such a state that renders the bicycle inoperative or missing or warped handlebars. So first of all, is every time we say bicycle, are we talking about fancy bicycles or any bicycle? This just is new, the newfangled ones, right? No, it's any bicycle. This is any bicycle. This is anything. If it operates, it's A-okay. Okay. If it has a warped handlebar and it's at a place that's been parked there for a long time, with so, no wheels or rusty chains, not so good. Got it. So if, the, if on the next page, I've got page three on sec, section D, basically it says that SMD fleet parking, basically you can't park anything in a public way overnight. 
Right. That's correct. That's correct. So those are different things. You're saying that normal bicycles, if it's messed up, you might, someone might take. We say yeah. typical bicycles. <laughs> um, A personal individual uh, bicycle. Get emails. Uh, I'm sorry. An individual personal bicycle. All right. So my question is, do we want to say something like, it can be removed after three days? Or some, some time period, because someone may have a messed up bicycle, a messed up normal bicycle. And, um, you know, <laughs> put it, put it uh, somewhere and like, woe unto them that their bicycle's messed up. You know, we don't want to take it from immediately. We want to give them a grace period. Right? <laughs> I mean, I've seen them too. I mean, obviously, there's bicycles that are hanging around. There's a pedal person here tonight, you know. Um, <laughs> Although your bicycles are very nice. <laughs> but, Wait, so you're going back to section G, or are yeah, you yeah, still yeah, yeah, yeah. SMD? I asked about that, the SMD, because I want to distinguish it from oh, yeah. just okay. regular bicycles. Okay. So regular bicycle under section G on page two, this is when you can remove a bicycle. You can remove it when it's broken. So why don't, why don't we say, um, I'll make the amendment, but I'll ask you first, Ms. Mish, if it would be okay to say, um, if it has defects, it may be tagged and removed, or after three days, it, how about after 48 hours, it may be tagged and removed? That's fine. Grace period. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So my amendment would be to add page two, section G. Um, after the word may, the words after a period of two days, such that it reads, a bicycle scooter parked in accordance with the section that has one or more of the following defects may after two days be tagged and removed and shall be held by the city, etc. That's my motion. Anyone second that motion? Second. Discussion on the motion. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same abstention. So that amendment is approved. Thank you. Any other discussion on the ordinance as a whole? Okay, so we're ready to vote on it. So I'll ask for. Yes. Sure. Yes. Councilor Labar. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Yes. Councilor Yes. 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 That ordinance approved the second reading. Um, so we're going to go go back up. Um, I would like to move question. Uh, item 19.19052, uh, 5, 4, 5, 4, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, and I'm sorry, not A, B. What am I doing? I'm, I'm moving B, C, D, E, and F as a group. I know I just realized it's out of order. I apologize. Oh, it's fine. Yeah. It's for referral. And I refer it to legislative matters. And I'm trying to think uh, if there's any other agency that should review. I'd yeah. like to take that group and send it to community resources, please. I'm down with that. Yeah. <laughs> I believe the planning board needs to be involved since these are zoning changes. Okay, so they'll okay. just get them. All know. three referrals, then. Yes, please. This is. Do we have this for the minutes? Did you get all those? Um, yeah. So, you're good? You see DEF. Anything that has the word marijuana in it. Yeah, it's got marijuana in it. It's loaded with weed. 19045, 19055, 19056, 19057, 19053. Good. Yeah. To planning. Board, Legislative Matters, and Community Resources. Very I'll good. second that. Any second. Any discussion on those referrals? All those in favor of referrals, please say aye. 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 Opposed um, abstention. So those are approved. Um, all right. So now let's see. In order, so the two other that others that are on here, 19052, an ordinance related to parking on Chestnut Street. Motion to approve um, to uh, uh, refer this to Legislative Matters. Uh, so moved. Okay. Is there a second on that? Second. Has this been to the Transportation Parking Commission? 
It came from came there. From it. Yeah. It came from it. Great. We expect to see the chair of that committee in legislative matters. Attends <laughs> 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 many meetings and yes, right. does his due diligence, so I bet you will see him. Uh, good. Any other discussion on the referral? All those in favor of the referral, please say aye. Aye. Opposed any abstentions? Uh, next, 19.062, an ordinance to amend Chapter 5 of the Code of Ordinances by amending Section 57, Special Municipal Employees. This is the one. This is mine, right? This is mine. This is yours. There's another one coming up. It's about pesticides. Okay, so I would like to refer to the Switch Matters. Uh, so I make that motion. I'll second. Any discussion referred to legislative matters? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstention? Great. Um, almost done here. If I can ask a quick minutes question. Um, I want to ask our administrative assistant just for my own peace of mind. Did we vote on the rule change with a roll call vote? I wonder if you can just confirm that quickly. Yeah, we did. We did? Okay. So that, those, that rule change was approved by a roll call vote. Yes, sir. Very good. Uh, so now we're at ordinances, just other ordinances. 19.059, an ordinance to amend Chapter 5 of the Code of Ordinances by amending Section uh, 5.7. This is, comes on the recommendation of the mayor. Uh, da, 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 da. So here's, we'll read it. All right. Um, so I will read this. In the year 1901, upon the recommendation of Mayor uh, David Narkowitz, 1905, 9, Norton's Amend, Chapter 5, by amending Section 5.7. And there was more enacting language. I'll just read it. In ordinance of the City of Northampton, Massachusetts, providing the Code of Ordinances, City of Northampton, Massachusetts, by, be amended by adding um, Chapter 5.7 of said code, and providing that Section 5.7, Part 1, Administrative Legislation and Administration of Government, Special Municipal Employees. Be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Northampton in City Council assembled as follows. Chapter 5 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Northampton, Massachusetts shall be amended by adding Section 57, which I'll read as follows. There's some redundancy here, uh, but it's perfectly fine. Section 57, Special Municipal Employees. Uh, so it, it sounds like it, yeah, it currently reads in accordance with Massachusetts General Law, the ordinance in any event reads in accordance with. Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 268A, Section 1N, the following positions of the City of Northampton shall be, and hereby are designated as special municipal employees. The ordinance shall supersede all prior orders of the Northampton City Council designating special municipal employees, and any order designating a position as special municipal employee that is not set forth herein shall be, and uh, hereby is rescinded. So we're adding to this section under members of the board of the following boards, committees, and commissions, the Charter Review Committee. Okay. So, is there a motion to? Uh, well, motion. let's get it. The motion to approve first. Yeah. So, Councilor Klein, do you motion to approve? Uh, yes. Okay. And then Councilor Labarge seconded. So, we're doing it this way because there's a request to vote on it tonight. Um, but first, why don't we have it explained? Would that be okay? Unless you want me to, but it's your. No, I mean so. we changed the ordinance recently to get away from where we used to had a, where the city clerk had a file full of orders that went back to the 1950s and just consolidated them so they'd be in the ordinance book. So now, if we want to add a committee, we just add a committee. Um, and this one kind of passed. Uh, uh, we had done that and sort of before the charter review committee got up and running. So um, we. Uh, wanted to go back and make sure that the Charter Review Committee, which has already been meeting and deliberating, um, was included in that list. So that's why we are sort of asking to have it expedited to be added to the list, because um, they're actually um, doing some significant <clears throat> hearings and doing some significant work. And so we're concerned um, that if we wait for it to go through the process, they may be done with some of that work. And so that's why we're asking to have them added. I believe an earlier charter review committee was on a list. It may have been in order, um, but I'm not sure. Um, an elected charter review committee would be de facto on the list, but that's a different story. But, so anyway, we just wanted to, it was an oversight, and we wanted to add it, at, make sure that they were added. Uh, just uh, once again announcing that I'm going to have to recuse myself because this would cover me. 
Although, just for the record, it doesn't really apply to me because I don't enjoy special. Uh, <coughs> I will not enjoy the special leniency that's built into special uh, uh, municipal employee uh, legislation because I am an elected official. So, right. but the fact is, I I think it just be appropriate for me to vote on on something that would actually directly affect. Me. Yeah. Discussion. The questions. Um, so my my question is, we don't have like a specific known conflict. It's just something that we want to do, and we want to do it sooner than later. Um, I guess my my issue speaks to the suspension of, of the rules. I mean, it's certainly lawful to suspend the rules. It's just not our practice. And um, if it's not an actual <coughs> emergency, then I'm not <coughs> something that I want to do personally. So I'll just explain that my position. Um, so there we go. So any other discussion? So the first thing we have to do is we have to suspend. Um, if, if we want to vote on it tonight, someone has to make a motion. I'm explaining something that I don't support. Uh, <coughs> someone would have to ex uh, uh, suspend Rule 5.2.3, which currently reads ordinances. No ordinance shall be voted on by the city council <coughs> until it has been considered by the committee on legislative matters. Normally, we refer to the legislative matters before we vote on it. So suspended. that's what would have to be suspended. Can I just ask for a clarification from the mayor before we vote on it? Yes. Um, so the the reason for sort of expediting this is because this committee is already meeting. That's right? correct. Okay. And and we'll and taking votes on recommendations for the charter, et cetera. Um, and I don't know that anyone's identified any um, known conflicts, um, but I think it was just a feeling that to be to be safe and precautionary. Um, I'm just thinking. I'm just thinking about members on the committee. Who, but I, I, nothing arises for me. But I think that was the concern. <clears throat> So we're we're asked we're being asked to suspend the rules on two different things that it's not going to legislative matters and also um, two readings tonight, correct? It's true. Although I would say to you that this is like a this is not a complicated um, you know that requires a lot of language thought or I mean there's an existing law that says you designate committees as special and employees. So the question is like, do we want this committee to be? To have special municipal employee status or not, so it's not like a typical ordinance. It's like we're just adding something to a list. So I think it's a little bit different than than maybe like where scooters should be located or something like that. Um, it sounds like a nightmare to talk. About. Yes, exactly. Councilor <laughs> Klein, do you have a follow? -up? It's defamation. Uh, I guess I just want to point out that. Um, there's kind of a deep inconsistency here in that we just passed as a group um, the inclusion of 19.062, um, an ordinance to um, for on special municipal employees for the Pesticide Reduction Committee. We've passed that on to legislative matters. Right? Didn't we just Are you asking it? me? I'm just, I'm just kind of pointing this out that What's this? it's a very similar situation. Um, Except it's not appointed in serving and already meeting. That's, I would say that was the one, that would be the one distinction. Like you haven't actually appointed it yet. When will you appoint it? It's the same subject, but it's different circumstance, yeah. I think is the argument. But yeah, it's the exact same subject. Yeah, and we do have a time imperative with that um, committee as well. But when does Leslie Matters next meet? 13th. 13th. To the point that I would also have to recuse myself from the discussion if this were referred to legislative matters, mm -hmm. I would not be able to discuss it in that committee either, so, okay. or preside over the issue, so. We meet on the 13th and the council comes back on the 16th. All right, counselors, let's focus because we want to just get, get through this. So the uh, legislative matters meets on the 13th and then the council comes back and meets on the 16th. So if this rules, if this if this rule were not suspended, we could always have a go and come back, and we could have two readings on it on the on the sixteenth. Uh, That's a possibility. 
So I'm not making a strong case. I'm just telling you why I stand on it. Okay. So any other discussion, Councilor Murphy? I guess I'm guessing what you're going to say. You often call the question. I'm just joking. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I'm just wondering the charter. How many times are you meeting between now and then? I mean, where is, is, is there true peril because you're having three meetings between now and our next meeting? Two meetings. Only two meetings. Oh, okay. Because, I mean, the, the, status, the status is just for the protection of the individuals that sit on that committee because it, it, it gives them a little more insulation from conflict. So it's in, it's in the best interests of the people that are volunteering to serve that we do this. Um, and, and, again... There's a whole bevy of other committees that have already been afforded that protection. Um, so, you know, in that sense, I don't have a problem with advancing this one quickly because that committee is already meeting and serving uh, because it is, we're doing this to the best interests of the citizens that are volunteering to do that work to prevent them from liability. Uh, so I, that's why I wouldn't have a problem with it because it's simply adding them to the list of other committees that have that protection. So it's really in their best interest. So I. I, w I wouldn't be a stickler on the fact that it has to be referred since they're meeting and this is in the best interest of the citizens that are doing it in favor and serving on the committee. Other, Except for Councilor Dwight. Except for Any other comments or discussion? No. Okay. So is there a motion of some kind? I think it was already made. Someone Move. made a motion to suspend the rules? Well, oh, not to suspend the rules. No. Motion to suspend rules is made here. I'll second it. The motion is made to suspend Rule 5.2.3, which is the referral rule to legislative matters. Made by Councilor Sherry, seconded by Councilor Klein. Any discussion on suspension of rules? Is what required. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstain. I am opposed. One abstention. So uh, vote of seven. So it passes. And so is there, um, So now we have a motion on the floor. Six any other discussion? On, the rule. Well, we've already done that. Any, so any other discussion on the ordinance for tonight? Okay, hearing none, it's time for, time for a roll call, I guess. Councilor Dwight. Abstain. Uh, Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Navar. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Yes. Yes. Councilor Yes. 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 <laughs> Any other motions tonight on this? Are we, I move the no, 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 no. We're, we're going to suspend rules. I think we need to do this. We should. The motion to suspend rules from Councilor Murphy and seconded yeah, by Councilor Bidwell. Any discussion on suspension of rules to allow for a second reading tonight? All those in favor of suspending rules, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Any move second reading. Councilor Murphy, move second reading. Is there a second? Aye. Seconds. Councilor Bidwell, Bidwell seconds it like a pirate. All right. <laughs> so it's been duly seconded. Any discussion on it? Um, then can we have a roll call on this, please? Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labar. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Uh, uh, yes. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor Carter. Yes. Yes. Abstain. Okay. Uh, now, an ordinance relative to parking on Pleasant Street. This is the first reading. Uh, move. <laughs> Second. Second. Question, please. <laughs> this is a Seconded. This is um, upon the recommendation of transportation and parking mission 18223, an ordinance relative to parking on Pleasant Street, yeah. section 1. Uh, that section 312.117, Schedule 16, on street, <coughs> street handicapped parking spaces. And since this section would be changing, and I, I take it to mean we're adding uh, uh, the location, Pleasant Street, on the southwesterly side, and the location, the first space southeasterly of Kingsley Avenue. This is a, a, a handicapped parking space to be added. The motion is on the floor. Any discussion? I'll actually ask the chair of, of TPC if you would describe it. So this uh, proposed parking change has been all over the place. And um, it started at the TPC, came here, went to legislative matters, went back to the TPC. And um, that what it now reflects is originally the uh, recommended parking space in the diagram was the one. Oh, do we have it? Uh, 
There was a parking space in front of Millennium Liquors. Uh, we got feedback from uh, the um, Disability Commission. They all came out and took a look at it. Oh, yeah, they were part of the group that it got sent to. And they um, they recommended the, the space next to Roberto's here. And um, so it, with that recommendation, it went to the TPC. TPC backed that idea, and it's here for you to look at today. It hasn't gone back to legislative matters, but um, I, I think this has had enough vetting and is ready to go forward. Council Murphy, did you have something? Absolutely not. Oh. <laughs> I think this is a wonderful idea. So what's the matter says no. <laughs> okay. But it's been changed since then, but it's been reviewed by legislative matters. Uh, exhaustively. <laughs> um, so any other discussion on this? Uh, good work to the TPC. That's good. Well, and the Disability Commission yeah, and so, um, yeah. everybody involved with this. Uh, Council of the Barge? Yes. Um, I did two site visits at this um, site. And my first site visit, I could see where there would have been a problem with people with wheelchairs in a van and so forth like that. The second site visit, um, Chris Palamas, Judith um, Kimberly, I, um, I think it was uh, Marie Westberg who came to that one. And it, the, the decision was definitely made for that area, for that site to be accepted because over by the liquor store was very dangerous. Thank you very much. Any other discussion or comments? Councilor Nash. Thank you to Councilor Labarge <laughs> for her help. Now I'm done. It sounds like perhaps we're ready to vote unless I hear any other desire to, to talk. No. Okay, so roll call. Councillor LaBarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Yes. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. Yes. Councillor Yes. 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 Let's approve them for this reading. Any uh, no new business this evening? Uh, um, um, now I'll, I'll move try to and adjourn. Move, uh, German, please. Okay, made by Councillor Dwight. Sounds like first. Councillor Klein. You're taking that? Correct. <laughs> Oh, oh, whatever. I heard. Good. So, all those in favor of adjournment, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Good night. <laughs>